and welcome to Herzegovina Networks Germany at the Adidas headquarters. I'm your host Carrie Tollefson and we are here for the 2024 Adi Zero Road to Records. It is going to be a phenomenal day. We couldn't have asked for a better day of weather to run in. We're going to have seven different races here with 120 athletes from 22 countries around the world. These athletes are here to set personal records, national records, and hopefully world records. We've seen 21 records in the past, and this year's fourth edition of the Adi Zaro Road to Records is back and ready for more. Again, what a beautiful day here. Our schedule today will start with the 10Ks and move on down to the 5Ks. Then you're gonna see the women run the mile and the 800 by the men, the men following, following up, up with the with mile, mile with, with the men's, men's race, race there. there. Again, Again, we're going to have, have some, some fun, fun today. today. The, the first, first person, person that we're going to talk to amongst a lot of other athletes and interviews that we're going to have today is Spencer Nell. Come on in, Spencer Nell. Hey, Carrie, how are you? I am super excited to be back. This is the fourth time we've done this race. It is. Do you like the weather? I absolutely love it. As an athlete, I want to get out there. Special order. <laughs> yeah. Medical. So fourth edition. I mean, you know, who would have thought that it would have gotten this big and you continue to have it year after year? Yeah, you know, like you say, you know, it, the idea was born out of an opportunity for our athletes to run. And now it's actually way, way more. Now it's actually a celebration of so many things. We have our Adidas Runners community in here. We've got 160 captains and coaches from, from 66 different nations around the world. Um, we've got retailers in here. We've got over 40 retailers here. We've got over 35 media here. So it's a, a week-long celebration that culminates in what you see out there. Well, you have had an exciting last couple of weeks. Boston Marathon, London Marathon, where we saw Paris Jeff to cheer. She just broke the world record for the women's only race. We're going to get to see that, too. How about that? Yeah. Is this? <laughs> this, this is, is the from shoe. Paris. This is the shoe. Two, Tell us about 16, it. 16. This is the top of the range. This is the Adi Zero Pro Evo 1. This is the shoe that Paris actually wore during the London Marathon, which is pretty special. You referenced the fact that we've had a pretty awesome spring, and we have. It started out in Tokyo with Benson Caprito winning Tokyo Marathon, then moving on to Boston Marathon, and we, and we had Rosemary Wanjiru who came second in Tokyo as well. Rolled forward into Boston, and we've got Cecil Lema running an absolutely amazing race. And, and then, you know, the cherry on the cake in the spring is obviously London Marathon. We get Paris breaking the world record, and we have to got to Geist in second place and you know we sweep the podium and then yeah. we still managed to to get uh, the men's as well so yeah I couldn't have asked for anything better and to Geist running that 21153 last fall amazing I mean we know the athletes have to be amazing but these shoes are pretty awesome look at right here we can see these athletes just crushing it that last little bit of the London Marathon yeah what a race that was and you know it's, the athletes obviously work very hard and you know we play a role in giving them what they need to actually train harder and then we come up with an awesome product like this which is just you know the pinnacle of all product. I'm a little biased but I can tell you that this <laughs> is the best product in the industry. Well we love it. You know watching Paris right here just the emotion, the hard work that goes into this. You have built more than just this great shoe, these great products. You've built a family here at Adidas. Yeah, I think that's one thing that we always think is the difference between us is that, you know, our athletes feel like they're part of a family. Yeah. And, you know, just seeing Perez there, just, you know, the, her emotion. Um, she's had a couple of ups and downs over the last couple of months since she did some amazing things. Um, now she's actually back and, you know, you see that reaction. We love it. Yeah, perfect timing for Paris 2024. Let's talk a little bit now about what you've built here at Road to Records. The community comes out. You bring people from all of the world to come and watch this event. What does that mean to you? Yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a week-long celebration now. What started out as an opportunity just to run is now a celebration that this is just the culmination of that. And, you know, even I walked in this morning knowing what was going to be here, and I just said to myself, outside of the weather, wow. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Even Hailey was out racing, the, or running, <laughs> not racing, but he was running with everybody, running 545 pace. I mean, you guys sure know how to pick these athletes. <laughs> Fortunate enough to have known Harley for over 24 years um, and happy that we have our legends that come out and yeah. support us. And even he is just like shaking his head at like what we show you. And he was out there having fun with the, with the media and out there having fun with the AR captains and coaches. And yeah, he, he's just constantly amazed and just such a, an amazing ambassador for the brand. What is your hope for today, Spencer? 
They say when you talk about it, it doesn't happen. Um, but no, I, I'd love for us to, to just, for everybody out to come out here and have fun. Mm -hmm. Not only us, people of the community. Um, this is more than just about the Adidas family. It's more about the greater Hotsukunara, Furt, Erlangen, Nuremberg area. And we hope they can come and have fun. And then ultimately for our athletes to go out, have fun, as I said, run fast. And ultimately, if they break some national records, some personal records and all world records, we'd really love that. Yeah, well, we have a little bit of footage from that run the other day, Spencer. You brought out quite a few athletes to shake it out and to rub shoulders with all these greats. Yeah, and like I said, this is our AR community. They bring so much energy. Um, and we met with the athletes and had an opportunity to do a run through the forest. And there you see just, you see the energy and you see the interaction. And of course, Mr. Gabriel Selassie was front and center. There he is <laughs> doing his exercises and entertaining everybody. He's always bringing this smile. How long has he been with Adidas? Uh, like I said, I've known him for 24 years, which is from 2000. And he was with the brand before that already. So I would venture to say, Probably around 20 ideas. You know, you guys signed me in 2000, and I have been continually feeling like I'm part of this family. I mean, I really think what you do is awesome, and we thank you so much for all that you do here, Spencer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, good day to you and a very, very warm welcome to Herzog and Iraq. If you saw our introduction just now with Spencer Nell and Carrie Tollison, you will know full well that this is the fourth edition of the Adizero Road to Records. And it is glorious weather. Dare I say it, I'm going to whisper it. This is world record weather. 10 degrees centigrade here in Hertz, so it certainly feels a bit warmer with this lovely spring sunshine. And there's just a very slight breeze across this Adidas campus. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, calling seven races here today. I know Haile Gebre Selassie is going to be coming in and joining me. Haile's going to be here for a little while during the 10Ks. I think uh, Carrie is going to come back in as well during some, some of the races. But, uh, wow, do we have a feast of great racing coming at us right now. Remember, great racing is repeatable. We can pretty much guarantee that with the caliber of the athletes here today. World records are the cream on the, on the cake, the, the icing on the cake, so we're not looking necessarily for world records. We are just looking for fabulous track and field athletics for all these athletes to have a lot of fun. With those Olympic Games less than 100 days away, nearly every athlete you see today in the elite races will be targeting, targeting Paris 2024. Well, the first race coming up in literally about five minutes time is the men's 10 kilometers. The circuit here on the Adidas campus is a clockwise pentagon. Yes, it's more or less a five-sided uh, loop of 1,308 meters, 1,308 meters, 1.3 kilometers, depending on what, uh, how you want it expressed. The start point, well, that's up at, if you imagine that loop as a clock face, the start point for this 10K is up at about 10 o'clock in the northwest corner of the circuit. And the athletes in this first race have to negotiate seven laps in the 10K of 1,300 meters and then uh, most of a final lap, just over another half lap. Uh, so spectators on the course, you will get many, many opportunities to see these athletes come whistling past in this men's 10K, due off in five minutes' time. The women's 10K, if you want to mark your cards, that's at 9.55, just five to 10. 
And then the two 5K races, the women first at 10.50, the men's 5K at 11.30, the women's mile at 12.10, the 800 meters for men, very rarely run on the roads, that's at 12.35, but that's gonna be incredibly quick. Their course is almost all downhill. And then the men's mile is at 1 p.m. And that men's mile, I can tell you, there is a very good chance of a world record for a road mile. Well, 19 men go in this first race, the, uh, uh, this uh, 10K. 19 men have broken 27 minutes in uh, history. But actually, in this race, there are some 25 starters, including four pacemakers. The pacemakers, well, their job is to take the athletes out at a nice, steady tempo, a preset tempo, get them into a rhythm, and then uh, enable them to project a little bit like the final stages of a rocket heading for the stars. And here we see the athletes, and uh, on the start line there, left of picture, Sebastian Sawe. He's the defending champion of Road to Records. He's also the reigning world champion at the half marathon, winning in Riga, Latvia, just uh, last October. And he is in fabulous shape. He was seventh in Belgrade in the uh, World Cross Country Championships. <laughs> athletes just about ready to get going. He's a versatile runner. You can find being competitive on the road, track, and in cross country. He represented Kenya at the Tokyo Olympics and has won many prestigious road races over 10K and a half marathon. Several times he broke 27 minutes for the 10 kilometers. He's always a force to reckon with. From Kenya, a warm welcome for Weldon Langat. Weldon Langat being introduced to the uh, spectators there. Seventh year in September 27, 21 in 27, 40. He's now a 26, 51 athlete. He was the 2022 Diamond League final winner at the 5,000 meters. His first global podium came at the World Road Championship. Nicholas Kipkori, best of 26, 51. He's the 10th fastest man in history. Kipkori. Third here last year in the road to records over 10k. And third in Riga in the World Championships, 5K oh, on the roads. He his He's time also fourth in the last Olympics the at 5,000 meters, uh, Kip Korea. Won the 10 kilometer last year at Road to Records, beating a stellar field in 26.49. Well, as we're hearing, the defending champion being races. introduced. One win he is second to left there with Sebastian the on his uh, bib. It after a brilliant final kilometer. He's the number one of the world road Went back to uh, Kenya these Athlete last three weeks since Kenya, winning the, the Prague champion, half marathon Sebastian on the 6th of April. Sawe. Sebastian Sawe, an absolute superstar. 26.49 he won to win here in Hurtso last year, having been second the previous year back in 2022, again in under 27 minutes. He's a fabulous half marathon runner as well as Sawe. We know he's in great shape. He's going to be tough to beat today for this field. So away they go then. And Adidas Road to Records 2024 is underway. The pacemakers here looking to go out at, wait for it, 240 per kilometre. That would be... Uh, them reaching 5k in 13.20 and double up that and you have the hopeful winning time of 26.40. The world record is 26.24 but the significance of 26.40 is that it is under the world record, uh, the event record of 26.43. That event record set by Ronex Kipruto in the inaugural road to records event back in 2021 here in Herzog. So, they are pounding along here. Not so many years ago, 13.20 used to be a great time for 5,000 metres on the track. Well, that's what they're hoping to get to halfway in here 
in this uh, 10K. And uh, these athletes forming a tightly knit pack as they negotiate these first few corners on what is a very, very quick circuit. And there is the uh, lineup. As you can see, plenty of pacemakers, but plenty of men here. Four, indeed, who have broken 27 minutes. And that puts them in a very special club. There's 19 men in that club who have broken, uh, broken 27 minutes for uh, 10K on the roads. I've got a rather special man with me right now in the commentary box. And that is uh, an athlete who, in his time, I think, set 37 world records. I think I gave up counting at about 30. 27. <laughs> 27. <laughs> highly Gebri Selassie, highly welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you doing, Tim? I'm good. I'm fine, highly. Looking forward to this uh, fabulous racing this morning. But, wonderful. Uh, and plus, a wonderful weather. I, I, I want to know what you take for breakfast, Kylie, because you look so elastic, so young, so full of running. Uh, most of us uh, went through that stage and came out the other side and we're now old men many years ago, but you just don't age. Uh, I'm good, you know, my breakfast as usual. <laughs> <laughs> I had, you know, very good coffee and uh, some bread and oh, wonderful, wonderful. Highly, these look like world record conditions to me. It's just yeah, about it perfect is. out there on, on the lap. Do you sometimes get that hunger? Would you still like to be out there racing? Yeah, Tim, don't ask me, you know, when I, when I see this race, ah, I wish, you know, just to be inside in the rest. But, uh, wow, that's, yeah, big chance. <laughs> well, coming up towards one kilometer now, we're looking for that first kilometer split. Yeah. We're hoping for around 240, but uh, we'll check what is coming through as quickly as we can. But certainly the pacemaker's doing a good job and the pack tucked in behind them. And Haile, tell us what, from your perspective, was the usefulness of a pacemaker. When you had raced many, many races with pacemakers, what was your thinking about the pacemaker's job? Yeah, that's very important, Tim. As you know, these days, you know, this, uh, in the stadium, you have this, uh, what you call it, waveling light thingy. And uh, if you have a pacemaker, you don't worry about, you know, just the pace, you don't worry about to push, you know, especially when it's windy, that's very important, you know, to have so, those pacemakers and to pace, you know, for that. Well, it, it depends. Uh, you, you don't need to run fast, you know, you have to keep, you know, the pace, the time and the schedule. And uh, for a moment, what I see right now, they're doing good and uh, we'll see, you know, they, it's a perfect weather and up to uh, at the end uh, we'll see <laughs> well it looks like they've gone through one kilometer in 239 so a brilliant job being done by the pacemakers we were looking for 240 if you were on a running track that is 64 seconds per lap so the last kilometer well they're saying 240 there my computer says 239 we're not gonna bicker we're not going to argue over one second 240 is absolutely perfect target time was 240 and they've hit it and highly of course when you're tucked in behind you were saying it protects you from any wind but also psychologically in your head you can relax a little bit more you're not having to push the pace exactly one of the most important part you know to have a pacemaker and you know, all those kind of things and uh, uh, your mind is free what pace you are, uh, you don't need to know just to know what pace you are running. And, uh, what, you know, the, the job of the pacemaker is a lot, I mean, a lot. But uh, what is important, you know, how, how far they can keep uh, pacing. Uh, for example, for a 10, uh, 10K, uh, at least uh, we need them, you know, uh, 6, 7K. And uh, even if even if they can make it, you know, the first, five, uh, first half, you know, not bad, and then at the end, you know, the job of uh, others. The problem is that these days, to be a pacemaker, to get to halfway and maybe well beyond, like today, 6K or 7K, you have to be a fantastic athlete, and maybe they want to be racing themselves. Exactly. If you look uh, my time, uh, who was uh, pacing me? I said, from the world, Ubikila, Martin, uh, all those uh, athletes, they were uh, very good athletes, and uh, they, were, they were winning many medals around the world, and. Um, the pacemaker job, uh, some people they think you know just an easy job. No, it's very very difficult job, and you have to be in, you have to be also in good shape, otherwise you cannot pace. Well, they've gone through 2k. It's a slightly slower split for that second kilometer. I got uh, 
5.22, so about a 2.42, 2.43 second kilometre. Their projected finishing time is uh, almost exactly 27 minutes at the moment. And there will be a little bit of variation in, in each kilometre. Well, it depends on, you know, the, the kilometre. For example, uh, the, the, the first part, the first kilometre was, uh, was you, know, you know, the, the course is nice. And this, I mean, the, the second kilometre is a little bit, you know, uh, curvy and up. A bit, not uphill, but it's a little bit. But you will see, you know, the, maybe the third and the... For, I mean, the third kilometer, maybe it's going to be uh, a little bit faster. Well, well done, Langat is uh, pushing to the front there. He hasn't sitting, he's not sitting behind the pacemakers. He was seventh here back in 2021. He knows this course well, does Langat. His uh, personal best, 26.55. That was in Brasov in Romania two years ago. But he finished second in that one to uh, Nicholas Kipkoria, who set his personal best in that race, 26.51. So Lang up there, look, he's, he's gesturing with his hand to the pacemakers. Come on, push, push. Yeah. I think he wants it a bit quicker, Hyland. Yeah, exactly. I think this time, you know, he has to he has to push by himself because the pacer, the pacemaker, he uh, doesn't look good. Uh, yeah, because he's very relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's difficult when you tr you have to trust the pacemakers, yeah, but yeah. then pretty quickly, maybe you there are question marks in your mind about if they're doing a good job. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you don't accept, you know, just if they are slow. I mean, if they are slow, and uh, well, uh, it depends on it depends on what kind of pace is it. Uh, of course, as you said, you know, the first kilometer was a very good uh, pace, and the second one is slightly slow. And uh, let me check, you know, the uh, the third kilometer again. We're well, looking for about eight minutes at yeah, 3K. They're yeah. just coming up to it now. Well, that first kilometer was 2.39, the second kilometer 2.42, 2.43. And at 3K, just waiting for that split to come through. They're looking around and they've got to feel relaxed here. Mukhtar Edris there is in the pack. Edris, twice world champion at 5,000 meters. He's up. No. Still only 30 years old, Edris. He was world champion 2017 and 2019. There we go, that third kilometre, getting back on track a little bit. Actually, that second kilometre, 2.45. Yeah, that, that was a little... A little bit on the slow side, but at uh, 3K. Well, we're looking at something just outside eight minutes. And they need to push on here now. The middle section is always important, isn't it, highly? Because that's where you've got to create the, the being on schedule because in the second half of the race you start getting tired there are question marks and you're looking at the other guys you're racing more yeah this is a very important uh, moment for this uh, race uh, they have to they have to catch up you know the, the schedule if not uh, uh, it's hard you know to achieve what they want what they want to run and uh, okay uh, right now everybody there and uh, I think it's it is time to push. Well, that last, that third kilometer was a 2.42. So at 27.04, the projected time, that still is very, very quick running. And of course, they will speed up towards the end. So we're looking at a sub 27 clocking here this morning. And when you think only 19 men in the history of 10K running have gone under 27 minutes, that will still be a super fast time. Looking at these uh, athletes, Pushing along here, Victor Mutai towards the back of the pack there. We think making his debut here for a 10K. There's a glorious view of Arena, the main building here at the Adidas campus, as they push on through this fourth kilometer. Now, Haile, if you were tucked in the pack there, you would be would you be watching the guys around you? Do you think about the other runners around you, or are you just thinking about yourself? No, I mean this time. Uh, you, I mean, you you have to look, you know, who's next to you and behind. Or it's normally, you you watch, you know, just uh, runners uh, who's strong, you know, in front of you. But did you, for example, in your great races against Paul Turgat, did you look at Paul during the race to try and see his face to see if he was working or? Uh, not in, not his his face because the, you can. I mean, 
if you want to see his face, you know, either you know you have to be inside or uh, yeah, yeah. Be, I mean in front of him. If you are in behind him, you know, you cannot see his face. What it look? I mean, <laughs> what it looks like? And uh, well, normally, you know, just to check, you know, the leg, the reaction of his leg, and uh, yeah, that's 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 the only thing, you know, what you what you do. So 10k, 4k rather, has gone by in 10:55. That. Uh, Fourth kilometer was at 2.48, according to the splits. I'm being fed, so they're slipping a little way outside 27-minute schedule now. They need to push on. Somebody needs to get the bull by the horns here and really run aggressively through this fifth and sixth kilometer. We were hoping they'd be around 13.20 at uh, 5K. It looks like they're going to be closer to 13.30, although there is still a big pack. How many athletes there? Probably 12 in this lead pack. And Jim Dessa is in there as well. So many big names in there. Gemachu as well, looking strong, looking comfortable. Jim Dessa, Gudeta of Ethiopia, a 27-10 performer. He's only 20 years old. He ran in the World Cross Country a month ago, finished in 16th in Belgrade. Gemachu was there as well. And uh, these fellas all looking at each other. Yes. So, 12.30 on the clock. We're about a minute away from the halfway stage. But it looks like all the pacemakers have gone when we are down to races. Mukhtar Edris, maybe he can spring a surprise here today. Edris, the uh, twice world champion. So approaching halfway then. Okay, hold on. It's only rivalry. Anthony Edwards. It's only noise. It's only hard work. It's only a number. It's only breaking the laws of gravity. It's only getting back up and up and up. It's only a jump. Welcome back to the racing here in Herzegonaurak. They've just gone through 5K in 1340. That was a 245, that uh, fifth kilometre. They're uh, quite a bit slower here than was being projected, was being expected. But it's so easy to forget that these, these are athletes. These are human beings. They're not machines. They have to run to how they feel. They cannot run like uh, metronomes. So the fifth kilometer was a, a 2.45. The one before that, the fourth kilometer, a 2.48. So they slipped a long way outside the course record schedule that we hoped for, but it matters not because we have a fabulous race building up in front of us. All the big names are there. Weldon Langa in second place to the right of picture is Gemachu. He's looking very comfortable. Gemachu Deriba, he was seventh here last year, the 24-year-old. His best is 27-12, and he might yet better that today. He's broken 27-20 many times over the last couple of years. Just missed out on the Ethiopian team for the World Championships last year, finishing fifth in their trial at 10,000. Mukta Edris is still there. Rodrigue Crisera is in there as well. There's an interesting athlete, the Burundian, the 25-year-old. He's a 26-56 athlete. And Crisera is in very good shape. He was third here last year in the 5K. And uh, recently ran well in the World Cross Country too. 
Wow. Hiley, if you were in this race approaching 6K and it had been on the slow side for you, would you be pushing now? But, I mean, if I if I am here, if I am them, and I I have to push, you know this. I mean, I don't know what I have to say. Uh, if if the coach and the managers around, you know this uh, course, please tell them, you know, to push a little bit. What is important here, you know, to run a good time, uh, to run, you know, the 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 principle of the race is, uh, I mean, road to record, and uh, let them push, because now what I see here. Uh, are the, Kilometer six, uh, not so many. Uh, I mean, so many, so many athletes. I mean, athlete. Uh, it should be, it should be not more than three or four uh, in this kilometer. Why, why they uh, pack together? I think it's better. You know, some. Okay, good. Now, he's well, pushing. <laughs> they've gone through six k in. 1624. So that was a 244. So they're not hitting the splits that were hoped for, but it does mean that we've got an exciting race out there. One interesting athlete, Yamane Kripa of Italy, the 27-year-old, the European 10,000 meters champion. He's tucked in there in about fifth place with the uh, slightly longer hair in fourth place now. Watch Kripa, got a very fast finish. He's a 352 miler. 2.44 for that last K at the uh, sixth kilometer. The projected pace was 27.20, the fastest time in the world this year is by uh, Yomif Kedjelcha, who set an Ethiopian national record in Laredo, Spain, just uh, some six weeks ago, 26.37. We're not going to see that sort of time here today. The pacemakers didn't last as long as we hoped, so they didn't set up the race through the first half, and hence this has become a tactical, slowish, tactical race by the standards of many of these men. Uh, honestly speaking, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna run this kind of race, you know, what's important? Uh, time, not uh, winning. It's not a championship. This is uh, uh, to show how fast I, you can run. Uh, but maybe there's a lot of boasting rights. You know, these guys are going to be meeting each other in the Ethiopian trials, some of them in the Kenyan trials, then at the Olympic Games in Paris. So there's a lot of psychological games going on here. Yeah, you can say like that, but. Uh, for me, if you come in for a time, for uh, running fast, that is the very important part. And uh, okay, now, as you see, uh, Sawe, Sebastian yeah. Sawe. Yeah, the last. The, I mean, now it's uh, three kilometers left, and uh, still many. Sebastian Sawe then hits the front for the first time. He is the defending champion from last year. Sawe, remember, the reigning world champion in the half marathon. He was seventh in the world cross country in Belgrade. That was a subpar performance from him after he'd won the Kenyan cross country trials for Belgrade. But he has been in fabulous form of late, winning the Prague half marathon three weeks ago. And that was in 58.24. So it was a new event record there and the fastest time in the world for a half marathon. Salwe then, beginning to ask questions here. Maybe he's uh, wary of the best of the uh, 5K and milers behind him. Well, Hailey, I know you'll want to go out there and watch the uh, finish. Yeah. Over the next few minutes, it's exciting stuff, this, as Sawe hits the front and begins to turn the screw. And uh, the pace will no doubt keep climbing now over these last two or three kilometers. That seventh kilometer was a 2.43. So, uh, still not super fast, but it's beginning to wind up. The projected winning time, 27.18. Watch that projected winning time. That will come down closer and closer towards 27 minutes. Having a really good run here is uh, Vincent Langat, the 23-year-old Kenyan, we think making his debut. But Sawe calling the shots. Gemachu Deriba of Kenya, of Ethiopia rather, tucked in on his shoulder and making a run down the left side there is Nicholas Kipkoria, trying to get up on terms with these leaders. But still, Sebastian Kimaru Sawe is calling the shots. He's run, he's won 
six of the eight half marathons he's run, so we listen to this. He's run eight half marathons. The slowest time he's ever run for a half marathon is 59.23. Unbelievable, and he's won six of the eight he's run. He doesn't know how to run slow, is what my notes say. But Sawe here has a race in his hands, and when you allow a race to be slow to halfway and beyond, it becomes a little bit more of a lottery. The strong, powerful runners over the full distance lose a little bit of their advantage because it becomes a little bit more open in the latter stages if they're only going to be hard racing over the last two or three kilometers, as is the case here this morning. So they're approaching 8K. Well, the race beginning to reach its climax now, almost 22 minutes on the clock. They've just gone through 8K. Perez Jepcirce, the winner of the uh, London Marathon just last Sunday, six days ago, in a new women's only world record, is uh, a very interested spectator here in Herzog and Aurak. They've gone through 8K in 21.49. That was another 2.43. They haven't really yet hit their straps. Well, about uh, five minutes to go, and just very quickly, I'll hand you over to Carrie Tollefson, who is with a somewhat special athlete. Carrie. I'd say, I would say a special athlete. Paris Jepticheer, she just set the women's only world record in London, cracking the tape. Paris, what are you feeling right now when you're standing here watching this amazing race, knowing how fast you're running right now, too? Um, I feel grateful and I feel honored to be here for the second time and um, I'm so happy I'm still celebrating myself for what I did in London Marathon running only women record yeah 216 16 it's a great way for you to get excited for Paris 2024 this summer yeah you ready for the Olympics yeah, I'm ready for the Olympic. I know it will be difficult, it will be hard, but I'm going to work my my extra work hard so that I can run well. Yeah. Yes, well, congratulations on everything, and let's get back to this race. Thank you. I'll get back to the race. It's beginning to open up because there's aggressive running here from Nicholas Kipkoria. He was third here last year. He was fourth in the Tokyo Olympics 5,000 meters. He was second in the Commonwealth Games in 2022. He's a man who has been so nearly the champion again and again, and it looks like today he's determined to make this strong, strong challenge for the win. Nicholas Kipkoria now. Vincent Langat tucked in behind him. And the projected winning time, 27.17. That eighth kilometre was another 2.43. So for the final time, they cross the bridge. And then through 9K, there's a slight rise, a slight climb from 9K onwards. Kripa is still there. Kripa now has moved into third place. Sebastian Sawe struggling to go with his pace, and Nicholas Kipkoria turns it up another notch. That gap is significant now, five or six meters behind Correa. He won the Kenyan 10,000 meters trials last summer and then was just eighth in Budapest at the World Championships in the sweltering heat. Well, they've gone through 9K now. 9K in 24.29. That was a 2.39, the fastest uh, kilometer of the race. The first kilometre was 2.39, this ninth kilometre has been a 2.39. And Yamana Klippa of Italy moves into second place. Sebastian Sawe trying to come back to Nicholas Kipkoria. But with about two minutes to go, that is a significant gap. And Nicholas Kipkoria continues to push hard, checks over his shoulder. Sawe into second place. Less than one lap to go now as they negotiate the top corner of the course. And again, Kip Correa looks over his shoulder. 
He has been this man again and again, the bridesmaid in major championships, in big races. And I think today he wants to make sure this is his day. He doesn't want this to become a sprint race. He wants it to be a test of sprint strength. Less than 400 to go. And Kip Correa holds that 10 metre gap. Sebastian Sawe in second place. Kripa of Italy back in fourth. He's trying to get back to the three in front of him. Gemachu now. Gemachu Deriba into second place past Sawe. But Nicholas Kip Correa looking superb. Again checks over his shoulder. He's doing a wonderful job of maintaining that gap. Judging his effort as he comes into the final turn now. And Kip Correa begins to celebrate. Gemachu chasing hard. It's going to be very tight at the line as they come towards the final turn. Nicholas Kip Correa has dominated. He's worked so hard for this win. Sebastian Sawe takes second place and that winning time unofficially 27.05. Well, so much of the hard work is uh, from Kip Correa has been rewarded. He was the first athlete to take the bull by the horns. And he deservedly wins there. Controlling the last three kilometers of the race. No sub 27 minute clocking today, but a brilliantly run, a brilliantly executed victory from Nicholas Kim Codier. So very close, as you would expect in a tactical race like this one. The uh, unofficial winning time, 27.05. We will confirm that for you very shortly. But Sebastian Sawe, the defending champion, putting up a fabulous defense of his title, losing out by just a couple of meters there to Nicholas Kip Codier. Rodrigue Quizera taking third place. Well, that's a wonderful way to start the day. They will get faster and faster, these races. Six more races to come. Well, the women's 10K is uh, next here. That goes off at 9.55, so you've got about 25 minutes, just over 25 minutes. Well, that was a scintillating win from Nicholas Kip Correa. I'm going to hand you down to Carrie Tollefson. Well, hello, everyone. We are down here with Nicholas, our champion in the men's 10K. Nicholas, you led that race with the last 3K. Was that the plan, to push hard from 3K out? Yes, I know. I was not that in the first day. At the beginning kilometers, I was so my body was not well responded. But after about six kilo, kilometers, where remain four kilometers to the finish line, my body start pick up uh, from six kilometers. So that I decided to, to try to push the best uh, because I was not expected to win the race. I was only want to see. We ran a good time. That is why I decided to push the best to assist the guys in front. You did a great job there. You've been third here before. You were third at the World Road Championships last fall. Today you broke the tape. What does that feel like? Uh, according to last year, I know I was starting in bronze place. Uh, I faced a lot of injuries last year, problems. I was having an injury. That is why I did train well during the season. That is why I tried to push the last year, but my body was not respond. Also, my injury was not good for me. So I thank God that I have been well. I hope for the good coming, this coming season. What does this race do for you for your upcoming season? Uh, I know it's, uh, I was from China last week. So this is the second race for me having in this place. So I know this one is the opening up a mind of me for coming all the whole season to Paris, to the Amor League. So I was trying to test my body, how is it? 
We saw you celebrating with about 200 meters to go. You got the crowd into it. Was that so much fun coming into the final stretch? Yes, I started celebrating at around 200 meters, the last 200, because I was really comfortable to kick with the guys. I know if we were together, I was still having some power to kick. Well, everybody, let's give it up to Nicholas Kip Career. Awesome job today in the men's 10K. Thanks, Carrie. Yes, a fabulous run from Nicholas Kip Courier. And a confirmation of that win for the Kenyan there, 27.04. We know he's in good shape. He ran 12.59 just last weekend for 5,000 metres in Jamin, China, in the first Diamond League of the season. Sawe taking second place after his win last year. Quizera, Burundi, Rodrigo Quizera. Great run from him to take a third place. That, uh, although he has gone faster than that, Yaman Kripa, 27.08 for the Italian there. Wonderful running from Kripa. He's such a great racer, and that's a, a massive personal best for Kripa in fourth. Well, this is the way it panned out. The uh, athletes setting off at a solid tempo, but never really hitting the splits that had been expected. Sawe pushed mid-race, but didn't really ask too many questions. And then it was Nicholas Kipkoria who took control. With about 3K to go, began to ease away from Vincent Langat. And then Sebastian Sawe, Yaman Kripa, the Italian, just 27 years old, the European 10,000 meters champion, challenged in the last 2K, but they couldn't get back to Nicholas Kipkoria. It was a great victory for the 26-year-old, third here last year, a man who is so often the bridesmaid, but today he was on top. He is the champion of the Road to Records 10K 2024. Well, as I said, the uh, women's 10K do off at 9.55, so they've got just over 15 minutes. There is the uh, main building of the Adidas campus. And medals and trophies, of course, for the first three in each of these uh, 2024 Adizero Road to Record races. There is a mass race, by the way. If you uh, haven't entered and you're watching, come along next year. There's always a mass race, a 5K, after all the elite races. And I understand this year there's a record entry uh, of 1,500. That's the maximum they feel safe taking around the course at the moment, although they hope that will expand in years to come. But it's a delightfully relaxed environment here in Herzogenaurach. This uh, campus, just a kilometer or two from the town center of Herzog, where uh, Adidas Club founded the Adidas company back in 1938. And the times produced on this circuit year after year have been quite marvelous. Considering, too, that there is a slight climb on the circuit, there is a very slight rise going up the left-hand side of the circuit. As I said, it's a pentagon. Effectively, you can regard it almost like a clock face, but going up the left-hand side from 8, 9, 10 o'clock of a clock face, that is where there's a very slight climb. The women, of course, whose 10K is in about 15 minutes' time, will start on the same start line as the men. And they will be given accurate splits throughout the race. They will know the schedule they're on. Well, it has been a remarkable road race season for Adidas. Great results in all the major marathons, but the crown and glory, of course, was Last Sunday in London, where they had both men's and women's winners, they had a clean sweep of the rostrum in the men's race. And uh, a women's only world record from Perez Jepchirchir was the uh, 
absolute icing on the cake there. 2 16 16 from Perez Jepcic ahead of Tiggs Tasefa, the world record holder who won in Berlin last September that new world record of 2 11. And then the third and fourth places in London were the quickest ever third and fourth positions. Joycelyn Jepkoskai finishing third in 2.16.24 and Alemu Magatu fourth in 2.16.34. Nobody has ever finished third as quickly as Jepkoskai or as quick as Magatu's fourth place in London less than a week ago. Well, the deck chairs are out and how appropriate they are on this glorious morning. Yesterday here in Herzl was a little bit cooler. It was quite a cold day. It was uh, grey for most of, most of the day. We didn't have any rain, but it was very cold. You needed to be wearing uh, several layers yesterday. And indeed, they've had a strange spring. Earlier on through April in this part of Germany, they've had uh, 25 degrees on some days and they've had snow as well. Utterly bizarre April weather much as uh, we have had in the UK as well, frankly. Good so morning, this everyone. is uh, an event the entitled Road to Records, and they are hoping for records. There have been 21 records so far in three previous editions. That's world records, national records have been recorded between 2021 and 2023. So can there be more added to those 21 this year in 2024? Six races to come. The 10K women due off in about 12 minutes time at 9.55. And then the two 5Ks for women and men, respectively. They're at 10.50, the women, 5K, and the men's 10K at 11.30. Those will be followed by the middle distance races, additions to the uh, portfolio here in the Road to Records event. The women's mile is at 12.10. These are Central European times, of course. The men's 800 at 12.35, and then at 1 p.m., the men's mile. And going in that men's mile, well, wow, do we have a strong field or what? It includes the uh, reigning world record holder from Riga last October, uh, Hobbs Kessler, who took gold in Riga in that inaugural, inaugural World Road Running Championships. But it includes two, Sam Prakel of uh, the USA, his uh, compatriot, and Emmanuel Wanyonyi as well. Emmanuel Wanyonyi, just 19 years old, but already this year he's run 143.5 for 800 in Nairobi. He's world number one at the moment over 800, and he will be a, a stern, stern test for the specialist miners Kessler and Prakel and Eric Avila, another American, goes in that road mile. Where we hope to see an improvement of Kessler's world record of 356.13. All right, everybody, I'm down here with Jennifer Thomas the Adidas Global Sports Marketing and Running. You know, you are somebody that celebrates women. You and I have been with Adidas for years. Let's talk about this, getting in, getting ready for the 10K. Absolutely, we have some of the best women in the world and I know that they're gonna do some really big things today and we're excited to see it. Yeah, you know, bringing back these awesome athletes every year to the headquarters must be super fun for you. Oh, it's amazing for us, it's amazing for our employees. The athletes are excited to be here and they came to run fast. And we always look good in our three stripes. Yes, we do, <laughs> three stripes are the best. Yeah. Um, the athletes are super excited about the product. I love how much fun they're having. I mean, this is serious. This is a big event. They are trying to set world records and hopefully we will see one today. But they also have a ton of fun. They do have a ton of fun, but it is also fun when you're at the top of your sport. You said it, Jennifer. Well, thanks so much for what you do at Adidas and let's see this race. Thank you. Well, there's the first three from that uh, men's 10K, that women's 10K. The next race is 
still some uh, 15 minutes or so away. The presentation for the first three in the men's 10 case. Tay coming up. Please welcome our fastest man in the 10 kilometer race at the award ceremony. Finishing in third place is Rodrigo Quisera from Burundi. 27 minutes and 7 seconds. Finishing in second place is the one and only Sebastian Save from Kenya. 27 minutes and 6 seconds. And the medals and trophies are being handed over by Arthur Holt, Executive Board Member of Global Sales and Managing Director EMEA. Winner, show me your hands right now. Our applause for the winner of the 10K race in the men's category with a time of 27, five seconds from Kenya, Nicolas Kipkuri.
one more move for the planet. Oh my gosh! Let's go. Oh, yeah. One more. All right then, one more. Und in wenigen Augenblicken, liebe Freunde, startet das zweite Elite-Rennen des Tages. Startzeit ist 9 Uhr. Well, we've had one or two technical issues, but we are back on stream, back online, back with you, I hope. And wherever you're watching, a very warm welcome if you've joined us in the last few minutes to this uh, 2024 edition, the fourth edition of Adi Zero Road to Record, the one-day festival of super-fast road racing. Uh, sponsored by Adidas and on the Adidas campus in Herzogenaurach, southern Germany. Well, we've had one race already, the men's 10K. It wasn't as quick as some expected, but it was still pretty swift. The winning time, 27.05 by uh, Nicholas Kipkoria of Kenya. The women's 10K is due off in about one minute's time. The uh, very strong women's elite field lining up over on the far side of the course from where we sit, this uh, pentagonal course. It's a five-sided loop 
of 1,308 metres, myself, Tim Hutchings, and uh, beside me, Carrie Tollefson, with you now for the next uh, two or three hours of great racing here in Herzog and Aurak. And Carrie, that was a, a nice race, that men's race. It turned out to be a tactical affair, but it's a good one to build on. I think a lot of those athletes are coming from the track already, so they are used to those tactical races. You know, seeing that final push in the final 3K that Nicholas Kip career had, he looked smooth, he looked sharp, and he looks ready to go. I mean, this is a big year, Tim. You've said it already on the broadcast, but a lot of eyes are looking forward to what's going to happen in August in Paris. Absolutely, yes. This is a stepping stone in effect, although it's a, a big and significant uh, weekend of racing or day of racing for these athletes. All eyes, of course, inevitably are on the Olympic Games. The World Championships in Athletics is biannual. It's every two years. That uh, came into being, what, in about 1991 to 93. Those were the first time it was, it was, it was every two years. So for, it, it makes it less rare. And what keeps the Olympics more special, therefore, for obvious reasons, is that the uh, Games are only every four years. And you think about it, as we see that circuit carry, they have to negotiate, uh, what, seven laps of that circuit and then about another half lap, these 10K women who get underway in just a minute or two's time. Um, what makes the Olympics special is it is every four years. Mm -hmm. And athletes can dominate their discipline for three years and then never be an Olympian. You know, they're, they're sick or they just don't perform well at the Olympic trials for you Americans, don't make the Olympic team. And, and it's, it's kind of one of the cruelties of the sport. You can be a dominant force and never make the Olympic Games. There's the lineup, by the way, for this uh, first race. There are pacemakers, of course, for this second race. Pacemakers for these women 10K runners. The uh, race has been uh, put back five minutes, we're hearing because of the technical issues. Just a bit of a power surge here at the uh, finish line. There you can see in the bottom of your picture the small black marquee where we are uh, situated, right beside the finish line, very close to the finish line. But what a strong field this is, Carrie. If anything, stronger than the men's. Well, I would have to say that it is going to be fun because we do have a battle up front, as we will in all of the races today. But I think a lot of eyes are on Agnes Jebet Negeta. She is somebody that, in my notes, I said, is she the best road racer in the world? And I think she is. Well, yes. Agnes Jebet Negetic. She is uh, a superb athlete. 28.46 she produced in Valencia on the first 14th of January. Third here last year in 30.27. But Agnes Negetic has to be the favorite here, although Margaret Chalimo is super strong as well. She's a 29.50 performer from Valencia three years ago. Jessica Chalangat, watch her as well, 30.01 is uh, her lifetime best. And they're being introduced to the crowd, of course. Caroline Grovdal, three times European cross-country champion from Norway, the 33-year-old in fabulous uh, form. Enormous strength and speed on the track. Eighth in the 5K here last year, but 10K more to the liking of the Norwegian. Has had a good year already, won the New York half marathon back in uh, the middle of March in cold conditions. There is Margaret Chalimo, 29.50. She was sixth here last year, but second in the World Half Marathon Championships in Riga last uh, October, just losing out on a sprint to Perez Jepchircher. And to the left there, the tall figure of Agnes Negetic. There she is. Her world five-kilometer record is pending, 14.13. This is a 10K, of course. She went through the first 5K in Valencia on the 14th of January in 14.13. Quite astonishing early pace there as these athletes get ready. This race has been delayed just by five minutes. But now they are ready. Alessandro Del Piero, 1996 World Cup winner for Italy, is the starter. So away they go then. Well, last year was a pretty difficult act to follow. Last year, seven athletes went below 31 minutes here in Herzegonal Rack. So they set off then from the start, which is... Uh, 
just off the circuit, the sort of uh, circle that makes the circuit. It's a pentagon in effect. Yep. And they're now on to that first lap of seven full laps of 1,300 metres. And Kerry, the pacemaking job, very, very important here again. The pacer, Winfried Nzisa of Kenya. Member of the uh, Kenyan police who's run 4.04 for 1,500 metres. Her job to set this up nicely in the early stages. And while we're looking at this big pack, I'd like to just point out we always run with Agnes tear up in our mind when we see these 10K athletes. She was the world record holder. She was taken from us far too soon, but they are representing her one of her favorite kits. Adidas has this amazing kit. You'll see the design on the shorts and the colors that they're wearing, and it is all in memory of Agnes tear up and raising awareness for gender-based violence. Agnes has the Tear Ups Angels Foundation and raising money and raising awareness to help people like Agnes. So just, you know, remembering her today and seeing this beautiful kit that Adidas put together for her. It's an eight-piece eight kit, and it's just beautiful. Well, this early pace looks very, very healthy indeed. We're looking for 2.58 per kilometre. That will bring them home in 29.40. Now, the world record, the official world record is 30.01, although that time has been bettered. Ngetic, Agnes Ngetic running 28.46 in uh, January in Valencia, but that time hasn't been ratified yet. Grogda has been training in Flagstaff in the USA in about 12th place at the moment, mixing it with the best of the East Africans. I think Caroline Grovedal's really built some confidence over the last couple of years. She has been winning all sorts of different distances on different terrain, on the grass, on the roads. She does very well on the track. She mixes it up, and we're seeing that across the board, Tim, where we're seeing track athletes now move to the roads, even move from 800 meters, like Tagisa Sefa, move from 800 meters all the way up to the marathon. These athletes are becoming well-rounded runners. Don't forget the Wings for Life World Run. Into that if you can. It's on May the 5th. It uh, raises funds for research into spinal injury. The uh, Holy Grail, of course, is finding out how to connect a nerve and to make it uh, work as one as it was originally meant to do. There are technologies that enable uh, a sort of uh, a leap over the gap created in a nerve when there's spinal injuries to enable athletes to have feeling and uh, to perform to some degree, but the race for life, raising funds for spinal injury research, a fabulous cause. So this is aggressive. This looks like hard running at the front end here. They've gone through 1K in 2.54. So inside schedule, remember, we're looking for 2.58 per kilometer. Well, these athletes are excited. They get out, they get out hard. And, you know, we know that our pacers, too, they're running at top speed here, trying to make sure that they stay right on pace. But Agnes is chomping at the bit, Tim. She is moving around our pacers. She is indeed, yeah, 254 confirmed there. Nagetic is so strong. Championship racing is different, of course. She was sixth in the World Championships last summer, over 10,000 in Budapest, and then was fifth in Belgrade in the uh, cross World Cross Country Championships four weeks ago, where uh, Kenya, wait for it, had one, two, three, four, five. She was fifth, and she wasn't in the scoring four for Kenya, even though she'd won the uh, Kenyan World Cross Country trial back in early March. Agnes Getic, though, at 23. Yes, as Carrie said quite rightly, some people are calling her already the greatest women's road racer there has been. The half marathon and the marathon beckoned for Nagetic, but she's uh, taking zero prisoners here. She's gone out very, very aggressively. Only five minutes on the clock coming up. And she is uh, laying down the tempo there and dictating what the others can do. And of course, it's a, a very simple tactic running from the front. You're saying to the others, catch me if you can. They have no option but to follow. 
It is uh, a pretty blunt instrument type of tactic, but it's an incredibly powerful one if you can carry it out. And look at this, single file already. Compare this with a men's race, where six minutes in, five or six minutes in, there was a huge pack. We have them strung out in single file, and Agnes Ngetic here is not taking any chances here. She's making it very honest from the start. Well, Agnes finished behind Margaret Chalimo at the World Cross Country Championships, but I love that they work together. They are both from Kenya. They know each other. That's what happens. You get these country women that come into these races and they they know how to race each other. They know what is consistent and they know that each other are consistent. So it's, it's interesting. So one, two, three then. Negetic and Chalimo. Looks like Jessica Chalangat. Jessica Chalangat yes. in third place. They are the expected big three. The uh, projected winning time at the moment is 29.05 carriers. They've gone through 2K in 5.49 with a 2.55 split. So they're, so they're way, way inside, inside schedule, schedule for the, for the uh, uh, world record, the current, current world record here. The projected winning time, 29.05. You can see Haile Gebreslasi there on the side. I saw him take off during the men's 10K interview with Kip Career, and he took off to go out and kind of help coach some of the athletes. He said he wanted to get out there, encourage them to run fast. This is such a great opportunity for them to get out there and to go after a world record. We don't have many opportunities like this, and what we do here at the Adidas headquarters at Road to Records is something special. So he's out there really encouraging people and all these athletes to really run hard. Yes, we want to win the race. Yes, we want to be second, third, but we also want to take advantage of these great courses and go after the time. Well, the get it is doing the damage here, and she's already dropped Jeska Chalanga. And we have just less than eight minutes on the clock. And Agnes Getic is pummeling these athletes behind her like a heavyweight boxer in the first round. She's not taking any chances. She's not making it a three-round or five-round fight. She is punching them hard here, and is very, very tough to match. Okay, hold on. It's only rivalry. Anthony Edwards. It's only noise. It's only hard work. It's only a number. It's only breaking the laws of gravity. It's only getting back up and up and up. It's only a jump. Welcome back. They've gone through 3K now in 8.48. That third kilometer was a 2.59. And the projected pace, 29.22. Well, this is a women's only 10K. And the current world record for a women's only 10K is 30.01. Can you believe that by uh, Agnes Tidop here in Herzegonaurak in September 2021? And there is, of course, a $50,000 bonus for a world record today. Woo! So that is big, big money, Carrie Tollefson. That is, and I know that they were talking about it at the athlete uh, meeting yesterday. And you know, the eyes started to get real big and everyone was very excited to hear again that they will indeed award $50,000 to a world record. Well, Margaret Chalimo takes her turn at the front. Only sixth here last year. 
It's only her fourth 10 kilometer on the road. She's still learning her job, but she is strong. We know that she was second at the World Half Marathon Championships in Riga last October, where she lost out in a sprint. And she had a fabulous year of racing in 2023. She was fourth in the World Championships at 5,000 meters as well. And third in the World Cross Country Championships a month ago in Belgrade. So she is in supreme shape, yeah. is Margaret Chalima. If anybody can match uh, Agnes and Getic here today, it may be Margaret Chalima. And at the moment, they're matching each other stride for stride. Remember that time at 3K, 8.48. And that puts them well on schedule for the uh, target time here today of 29.40. In fact, the projected time at the moment is 29.22. Well, Margaret Chalimo, you said it. She has run so well over that half marathon distance. She ran 64.46. I mean, just flying, she has so much strength. She has so much speed. And that combination is lethal over this kind of a race today. Yeah, this generation of distance runners have such a widespread of ability. You have athletes who are great milers, 5,000 meter runners, they can run 10K or 10,000 very well, and even up to half marathon sometimes. The spread of ability in so many of this current generation of athletes is quite astonishing. And I think it's partly to do with shoe technology, it's partly to do with training innovations. Well, I even like, you know, Tegisa Sefa is a sub two minute 800 meter runner. And then she moves up to the marathon and is the first person, the only person to break 213 and run 211.53. I mean, that just shows you though the depth the talent the the range all of it is so inspiring and so exciting to see and not only are these athletes good on the track and on the road but they're very good on the grass well they're uh, talking of being good on the road Agnes Getich has hit the front again she had a little breather there for a couple of minutes tucked in behind Margaret Chalima but now she is in front these two taking turns at the front end they've gone through 4k now in 11.51, that uh, fourth kilometer was a 3.03, so they did have a little bit of a break in that one, so to speak. The previous three, remember, were 2.54, 2.55, 2.59, then a 3.03. Although, Carrie, there is a slight upslope yep. on one side of this loop. Yeah, you definitely have some ups and downs on this course. It is predominantly flat, but there are some ups and downs, which is actually kind of nice. Halfway through your race, if you get a little bit of a a climb, you get to break it up a little bit. But this is what I thought was gonna happen. I see these two athletes working together. They're taking their share of the lead. These are those kilometers that they need some help. They wanna still turn the brain off and not necessarily think about what's going on around them and just get through part of that race. So then in the final kilometers, they can really tune in and really get ready to kick. So the world record is under threat here today. We are 10 seconds inside, world record tempo at the moment. They're in the fifth kilometer. They've gone through 4K in 11.51. 5K clocking coming up very soon. But Agnes Ngetic is really tearing up the roads here in Hurtskanaura. A 28.46 recently in Valencia. That was back in January. That was in a mixed race. The world record currently for a women only 10K, as is this one today, is 30.01 by Agnes Tirop here in 2021. Kerry, it's looking good. It's looking good, and you know, she knows this. She's been there, she's run faster than 30.01, so she knows that she can do it, but putting it together without any other people around her besides Chalimo right there, that's the story, right? I mean, she is on her own right now with one other woman trying to chase the clock, and that's what makes it hard. She can't tuck in behind guys. She can't tuck in behind a pack. She is on her own out there with Chalimo right there helping her along the way. She's trying to get a gap, though. She's trying to get separation from Margaret Chalimo, and maybe that is happening now. She's been working really hard for most of these first uh, 15 minutes to break the opposition. She lost Jeska Chalangat a few minutes ago, and now she has separation from Margaret Chalimo. Absolutely brilliant. The 5K time, 14.49.
That's a projected winning time of 29.38. That fifth kilometre was 2.58. There it is confirmed for you on screen now. 29.38. We could be seeing a world record Ooh. unfolding here this morning. Come on, every time these athletes go past you, if you're out there watching on the course, let's hear your cheers for these athletes, because Agnes Jabet Negetic at 23, and she has so many more years of strength training to come, is uh, here setting some of the fastest splits ever seen, and maybe carry heading for a world record. It does get tougher though, doesn't it? You go out really hard, you are getting more tired, so those last two or three K are the toughest. Well, she's had one of the best role models to look at. Her mom was an act, was actually a national secondary school 10,000 meter champion back in the 90s. So her mom showed her the way, and you know that she's excited, and what would that just feel like for her to say that she has the women's only world record and potentially get that world record ratified of her 2846? That would be pretty special to hold both. Well, she checks her watch there. She's thinking on her feet here, Agnes Negetic. When she ran in Valencia back in January, she was in a mixed race, so she had men pacing her there, which means, of course, she wasn't having to do all the work like she's doing right now. You're seeing an athlete here who's having to give everything because there's nobody helping her. In a mixed race, of course, when they can have men around them, men in front of them, laying down the tempo, it makes it significantly easier. And that's the why there are separate world records for women-only races and mixed races. Perez Jet Cheer Cheer on Sunday, just six days ago, setting up women-only world record in London, taking over for Mary Kaitani, who had so clear, so nearly broken 2.17 a few years ago. Perez Jet Cheer Cheer run 2.16, 16 in a women's-only world record marathon. And we could be seeing a women's-only world record 10K here this morning. 6K is beckoning, but Nagetic doing a fabulous job at the moment. She's really checking her watch, Tim. You can see her looking down, constantly seeing. Is she on pace? She looks good to me right now. It doesn't look like she's struggling. Sometimes when you see an athlete really making sure they're staying on or if they're taking a check behind, that could mean or signal that something's going on. But she looks good, and this is the crowd right here. They can feel it. She can feel it. And she's excited to keep on going, I'm sure, through this crowd to get a little boost to kind of wake herself back up. Well, no woman has ever broken 29 minutes on the track for 10,000. Yeah. Niketic has done it on the roads now in Valencia, as I said. Today, she's not going to break 29 minutes, I think, but she's going to run super fast through 6K now, a 3.01 clocking. That is her slowest of the race so far. The time at 6K, 17.50. But still, the projected winning time is 29.43. So Ooh. she is still almost 20 seconds inside world record schedule. But this is a very important few kilometers right here. She has to re-engage. She has to almost think of the race gun going off again. I often think of getting through 5K and then re-attacking 6, 7, and 8K because you know you can finish strong. You'll get that extra boost knowing you're almost there. But right here, this is the critical moment of this race for her to really dig in, focus, believe, tell yourself all those positive things that you have to do to fight through the pain that she She's in right now. No, I think you're right, Carrie. Between six and nine K is tough. And then once you're into the final kilometer, that last circuit, you're sort of, it's, it's almost like being in the home straight in a track race. You can, on the last lap, you can give everything. But here Nagetic is leaning into this. Look at that sort of forward lean. And she's giving everything here. Halfway around this seventh kilometer, so she's around the top of the course at the moment, and then there's a slight downhill section down the right-hand side as they come down towards uh, seven kilometers. Tim, I liked that when we zoomed in on her eyes, you could see she was trying to look down, but then she looked back up. She's got her eyes out in front, which means that she's still looking out there. She's still grasping for every little bit that she can get, and I think that that is a good tip that she is not tiring too much right now. When you start to tire, your arms get to kind of clench up, your eyes go down, you start to lose your form, but she looks real smooth. Are we going to see a world record today, Tim? Well, I'll tell you what's an indication of how well she's running. She has uh, pummeled Margaret Chalimo into submission. 
Chalimo about 60, 70 metres behind Nagetic here. And Chalimo is in fantastic shape. Just a month ago, she was third in the World Cross Country Championships. She's a fabulous racer, is Margaret Chalimo. And yet she's had to give best to uh, Nagetic here, who checks her clock again. We're looking for the 7K clocking. Chalimo in the background, maybe just closing a little bit on Nagetic here. Hard to tell. Top of picture is Chalimo. Nagetic here, though, with those extraordinarily long legs coming up towards uh, 7K. 20 minutes, almost 21 minutes on the clock. Well, I know that every time you go on this course and you see a turn, it's almost like you want to slingshot off the turn, get a little momentum, wake, wake those legs back up, as I said. But that's one of the things you have to start doing. When you've been out on your own, like Nagetic has been, she's got to start playing some games. She's got to start thinking of tangents, how to get around the corners, how to get to the, the crowds again. Anything that she can do to keep her mind engaged and to keep her thoughts away from thinking about how hard this is, how long she's already been running. She is, she's feeling it, guys. She's starting to get close. Well, I can tell you that back in third place is Gomerit Gebzer, Jessica Chalangar in fourth, Sainet Getachew in fifth, and uh, others struggling in the wake of this really aggressive tempo. So, through 7K in 2054, 2054 at 7K, and that was a 3.04, she has slowed again there. Her last two kilometers, there are signs of slowing. 3.01 and 3.04 for the sixth and seventh Ks. She's flying here, Got running through a crowd, always raises the adrenaline a bit, raises your game slightly. It makes a difference, keep cheering her on here. Well, she has the ability to tap into that speed. She was sixth last year at the World Championships on the track in the 10,000 meters, but she's a 14-13 5,000 meter runner. So she has the speed, she has the wheels to do so. Well, that was in the first 5K. That's right. Of Valencia. So uh, that day she was absolutely on fire and she's burning hot today as well as she uh, negotiates this eighth kilometer. She's got to dig in deep here now. This is where you really need to start thinking about what the task is at hand. She's got to believe that she can set a world record. She has to believe that she's the best in the world. She is the best in the world right now on the road. So she's got to run that way, what she's been doing and showing us what it's all about. Well, at 7K, that time of 2054, was a projected, uh, gave a projected winning time of 29.51. So at 7K, a uh, couple of minutes ago, she was 10 seconds inside world record tempo. Now she's deeply focused, look at that. Beginning to sweat up a little bit, still working really hard with those arms swinging across her torso. 8K coming up, this is important. But she's into the final quarter of the race now and still Margaret Chalimo in the background is battling away to try and get back to Nagetic. I'm sure Nagetic here knows, Carrie, that if she slips up just for a minute or two, Chalimo will be on her shoulder. Oh, for sure. She knows the caliber that she is. She has raced her plenty of times. She knows that she just was beaten by her at the World Championships. Chalimo finishing third there and Nagetic finishing fifth. So, yeah, she's running on a little bit of fear, I believe. Eight kilometers coming up then. 2054 it was at, at 7K. And 29.51 is that projected winning time. 10 seconds inside the world record. Checks her watch again there. And there's the last 5K, those kilometer sprints. Look, 303, 258, 301, 304, and a 306. She is tiring, there's no doubt about that. She committed so early. 306 for that eighth kilometer to get her there in 23.59. And that projected Winning time is now 29.59, two seconds inside world record tempos. This is where she's got to rig, dig really deep. If you can hear me and you're on the course, cheer her on, roar her on here. It could be the difference. Your voice could be the difference between a world record and just missing a world record.
Well, Tim, you can see her catch, trying to see what her watch is telling her. But as she sees it slowing, that is really hard on her mentally. But she looks strong. Can she pull it together here these last couple kilometers? She is coming off the pavement just fine. She's wearing those fast shoes. She's looking good. But it is so hard. She went out very, very strong. 254, 249. 259 for those first kilometers. Is she starting to feel that potentially? Well, 17 women in the history of the sport have now broken, in fact, 18 women have now broken 30 minutes for 10K. Negetic, well, she does it for fun. But uh, here she comes through the ninth kilometer, almost in the home straight, effectively, and she knows full well that she's been slowing. She will be aware that her form has been lapsing. Her last 3K splits, 301, 304, 306. She's got to push on hard here as she heads into the final circuit. Well, knowing that they're running for Agnes Tirap, they have those colors and those patterns that Agnes won in back in 2021 in that world record that still stands today. That has to keep her going as well, thinking about who she's running for and how everyone from Kenya, especially the women and the people that help the Tear Up Angels, they're trying to raise awareness and to help women in situations like Agnes was in. So you know that she's thinking of her today. Absolutely. But what a contrast there is between those early kilometer splits. Remember the first three Ks we're at 20, 254, 255, 259. Even the fifth kilometer was at 258, but 304 and 306 have been our last two kilometer splits. And we're waiting for that 9K split to come up. She's on the final circuit now. The final lap of seven and a half laps here for Agnes and Getic. The job has so nearly been done. Almost perfection so far. Still inside world record schedule. For the ninth kilometer, another 306. She's just slipping outside that world record schedule. Look, 3006 is the projected time now. That 9K split, 2705. This next two minutes is absolutely critical for Ngetic. Can she pull back those five seconds? Carrie, where's your money? I think that she's going for it. You can see that her arms have, have gotten a little bit tighter, but she's opened up those hands. She's going to the sprint. That's what she knows. She knows how to run on the track. She can crush the hills and the grass in cross country. Can she do it on the roads today, everybody? Let's bring her in. The gadgets then working so hard on this final circuit to try and break the world record. Remember, the numbers we're looking for, 30-01 is the world record for a women-only 10K. You get it here for the whole race up until this last kilometer has been inside world record schedule. Checks her watch again. She's got to drive on over this last minute and a half to try and get inside 30 minutes. Studying her watch hard there. Still thinking on her feet, the consummate professional but the projected winning time at 9k was 3006 can she pull back those five or six seconds it's going to be very very tight she's a great track racer we know she has the speed 832 for 3000 she's run 1413 remember on the roads for 5k in valencia and on this downslope now, Agnes Jebet Negetic trying to break another world record. Come on, folks, let's draw her on here. Watch the clock. Negetic is going to do it, or is she? Into the final straight now. One turn to be negotiated. Agnes Negetic heading towards the line. She needs 30-01 at the tape, and she's got about 10 seconds in which to do it as she pours it on towards the line. It's going to be so, so close for Negetic. 
She's going to be, I think, a second or two outside it. Or is she? Oh, the Genich crosses the line there. And I think it was 30.03, something like that. I think she might have just missed the world record. Oh, my word. The Getich out on her feet. She's given 101%. And Margaret Chalimo, what a run from her. Most of the race in isolation. Once she'd uh, done her battle with Nagetic and had to give best to her compatriot. Here she comes then, Margaret Chalimo. A valiant second place, crosses the line there in about 30-38 unofficially. But I think Nagetic herself missed the record by about two seconds. Look at this sprint for second, for third place, Joan Chalimo. Looks like she's heading for the winner of that one. Jessica Chalangat may be taking third place. Very, very tight at the line there for those athletes inside 31 minutes as well. Brilliant running from them. Yes, 30.03 seems to be the uh, official winning time. Margaret Chalimo in second place. 30.39 is what I'm seeing. And in third place, Jessica Chalanga, 30-46. Well, Carrie, it was a race of two halves, really, wasn't it? She overcooked it, I suppose you would say. You know, if you're going to be analyze the race, you'd say, look, going out in 254 and 255 and coming back with a bunch of 306s, is a slight misjudgment. It's, it's very easy to be hypercritical. It was still a brilliant run. She's missed the world record by two seconds. Yeah, I do. I feel for her so much because she did have to do the majority of the hard work on her own. But you're right, just going back and after she watches this, wondering if she will say, maybe just holding back a little bit in that first 3K. But she went for it. We got to give her so much credit. She is a superstar, and I hope we see her for many, many more years. Well, undoubtedly we will. She's only 23 years old. Fourth place, by the way, was Joan Chalimo. Harry's heading out to do some of the uh, interviews. Now our little commentary tent is right beside the finish line. Joan Chalimo's time in fourth place, 30.52. The uh, place times are fabulous here. So many athletes under 31 minutes. Caroline Grovdal, 30.52 in fifth place. She finished strongly, as she always does. And uh, just looking at Grovdal, that is uh, not a personal best for her. She has run 30-32. That was in Hula in Norway back in uh, October 2020. But it's still a brilliant run from the 33-year-old Nor Norwegian to get in amongst the best of uh, Kenya and Ethiopia. Well, the winner missing her, the world record by just two seconds here. And Carrie is with her. All right, Agnes, so close today. You took the, co the race out very hard and finishing up on your own. How was your day? How do you feel about your race? Uh, my race goes well, though I struggle alone. I push alone. That's why I'm, I missed a second, two seconds by record. So I'm happy for the results, but I wanted a world record, but because it, I missed with two seconds, I can say it's OK because I push alone. Yeah. We know you're waiting to hear that you have the world record ratified for the 2846 that you have. Now you're here, and you were going after this world record today. How do you train your mind to be so tough? Because we know you train your body. But when you're out there alone, where does your mind go? Uh, I normally train my mind that Okay, I have the record, but this is not my final results. I have to go far from where I have put my record. So I don't put the record that I have it, so I can stay. It. I have to fight for another level, which is Olympics, that is the target, and other events ahead of me. So I normally train my mind not to put one thing that I have only a record so I can stay, you know. You were so spectacular today. You, we have your coach here, Ruth. Ruth, were you proud of Agnes today? Yes, I am proud of Agnes. She has struggled, and here she is. So we will go back and prepare again, and then we focus ahead.
You said she struggled. Has she had some injuries? What has been going on? Um, uh, she pushed alone, even without anybody, and I saw her doing well. Oh, today she struggled. I see. Yes. Though we we needed we needed the record, but tomorrow is also another day. Tomorrow's another day, and maybe we'll see you for the fifth edition next year. Yes. Okay. All right, everybody. Our champion in the women's 10K, two seconds off that world record, Agnes. Way to go, Agnes. Well, Agnes to get it there, clearly disappointed to have missed that world record by two seconds. She uh, had to do so much work on her own. It's never easy that way, but her coach Ruth there being very philosophical. Confirmation of the top 10 there. Nagatic 30.03, Chalimo running at 30.39, and Chalangat 30.46. Grovdal getting in amongst the uh, Kenyans and Ethiopians with a great run there. Indeed, as you can see, the first eight inside 31 minutes. That is special. One more move. For the planet. Oh my gosh! Let's go. <laughs> One more. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> All right then. One more. This is not okay. Oh, oh, oh. uh, this is not what I ordered. I said I'm sorry. Are you winning and saying? You don't use it anymore. Your card has been cancelled. Quarterpipe, das große Finale hier von unserem Matt und Senat. So, haben wir noch eine Läuferin. Schön, dass alle im Ziel angekommen sind. Matt nochmal mit einem kleinen 180 to Half Gap. Jetzt sieht es vielleicht nicht ganz so spektakulär aus, aber ich verspreche euch, die Tricks sind nicht ohne. Oh, schöner Replay. Einmal den Rahmen um den Lenker geschwungen. Und sehen hat hier nochmal zum Grande Finale. Welche Combo hat er für euch noch übrig? Oi, oi, oi. Fahrt immer mit eurem Mountainbike so zum Bäcker hier. Senat freihändig. Macht nochmal Lärm hier auf unserem Adidas Campus. Letzte Combo hier von unserem Senat, bevor es hier weitergeht mit dem Laufsport. Na, ey, wollt ihr noch eins sehen? Senat hat noch Bock. Macht mal Lärm hier. Ei, ei, ei. Erst freihändig und jetzt ohne Füße. Das ist Freestyle hier vom Allerfeinsten. Nicht umsonst unser junger Mann hier aus Österreich. Einer der Besten der Welt. Vielen lieben Dank. Wir sind durch und freuen uns auf die nächste Show. Habt noch einen schönen Tag und viel Spaß beim Laufen. Well, the next race on the track here in Herzogenaurach will be race three. That's due off at 10.50, so in about 11 minutes' time, the women's 5K. And frankly, on the track, anything under 15 minutes is very strong running. This is way the uh, women's 10K unfolded just a few minutes ago. The early pace after Del Piero, the footballing legend, set them on their way. 
The early pace was incredibly aggressive, maybe too aggressive from Agnes and Getic, but that's a good quality to have when you have to rein an athlete in and teach them a little bit more restraint. That's a nice problem to have. The Getic uh, early kilometers were 254, 255, 259, and then a 258 through 5K, and then she started slowing. The splits were all outside three minutes, and maybe she's just overcooked things a bit in the first half here today. But you live and learn, and we have to remember, Carrie Tollefson, that Agnes Negedic is 23, and she will carry on learning with each race. Each new race experience is more information to put into the computer, the great racing computer every chance for her to gain more experience. You know, she talked about this summer and hopefully being able to the race at the Olympic Games. And yes, even today, she learned more about herself. She knew where she needed to work on. Her coach said she struggled a little bit out there as we could see, but she still powered through. And today she became a better athlete because of her race. She will be a better athlete. She'll be a wiser athlete. And the summer beckons now for Agnes Nagetic. Of course, the Diamond League series is coming up, leading through to the Paris Olympic Games. There's the map of the 5K races that uh, we're going to enjoy next up, the women first and then the men. And the 5K races, well, they are three laps of uh, 1,300 metres, 1,308 to be exactly, three laps, and then about three quarters of another lap. So almost four laps for these uh, 5K athletes. And you know, Tim, sometimes being on the track, running 12 and a half laps, it's a long, it, it seems long, right? But it's kind of fun to mix it up and come out here and do something like a four lap race. I mean, that's, you know, you can break it up mentally. You can kind of attack it physically differently. Just a reminder of that result in the women's 10K. Margaret Agnes uh, Ngegetic, 30.03. Margaret Chalimo, 30.39, some 36 seconds back. And uh, Jeska Chalangat, 30.46. So uh, some 43 seconds back, but so frustrating. And it gets it there to miss the world record by two seconds, to miss that $50,000 bonus put up for a new world record here today in any event. And of course, the mile races come towards the end of the program, the women's mile, then a men's 800, and then the men's mile will close the show. And the mile is a world record distance these days on the road, has been since last uh, October, and the inaugural world world running, uh, world r race run running. Uh, oh goodness me! The inaugural world road running championship took place in uh, Riga, Latvia, and the uh, reigning world champion is running Hobbs Kessler in that men's mile, the last race of the day. Getting copious amounts of liquid on board, that's exactly the right thing to do there from Agnes to get it. Before the uh, presentations take place. Dear Adidas family and dear running fans around the world, please welcome our fastest women in the 10K race at the award ceremony. Finishing in third place is Jeska Shelangat in 30 minutes and 46 seconds. Finishing in second place is Margaret Chilimo in 30 minutes and 39 seconds. And the winner, what a race of the 10K women's race. Congratulations to Agnes Negetic in 30 minutes and three seconds. All three from Kenya. And the medals and trophies are being handed over by such an honor 
He's an Italian football legend. The world champion was Italy in 2006 and an Adidas ambassador. Bienvenuto, welcome, Alessandro Del Piero. training it it's like stamping the last six months work with a big seal saying yep that's great job done there now you project yourself into the summer season the olympics are only about three months away a lot of races and planning and good training to come but you've sort of laid the foundation of your house i think that's critical to mention it is the foundation they are not in peak performance yet and we're seeing these great great performances already today you know they have to think about august they have to think about where they can go with their training where they can go with their racing so yes we see some really top-notch performances today but i think it just gives us a sneak peek of what we're going to see this summer well i don't know about a sneak peek of what we're going to get later on in the summer at those european championships in rome for some of these athletes and then at the olympic games of course in Paris. The athletics is effectively the first 10 days of August in the uh, French capital. But right now, we're going to see what these uh, leading ladies can do over 5K in this uh, third race of the day here. Three laps of 1,308 meters, and then almost a, a fourth lap. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes' time. So there's the start list for the women's 5K. As you can see, a uh, very high caliber field again in this one. Dawit Sayom is a 14.39 performer. That was in uh, Lille back in November 2021. She possibly starts as favorite. All the watch out for Medina Asa of Ethiopia, just 19 years old. Won the 5K here last year. She is the defending champion, Asa. Fortune Tesfaye as well. Second in the 10K here last year. She will be tough to beat. Best of 14.45. Lemlem Alemu, fifth in the World Cross Country last year in Bathurst as a junior. She's still only 19. Possibly the tallest there, Lemlem Alemu. But only 19. She has already worked her way up to the elite and senior level. From a world junior champion in 2022, she already finished sixth in the world championship of yes, So these leading athletes being introduced to the uh, sprinters around the start line. With 14 16, she also holds the personal best. Very but they hope to go out here in 254 per kilometer, kilometer carry, which would be Aysa. bring them home in a time of 14.30. That would be super fast. She already had a long career. She had success at 1,500 meters. Well, we just watched Fontaine Tesfaye win the, world, the BAA 5K, which is the day, two days before the Boston Marathon, and she bested and broke the record from Sanberi Teferi, who we've seen here race so well. So we know that she's fit. She ran 14.45 there in that 5K. That's Fontaine. That went say home to the right of the picture then, being introduced last so ball. But who will take this out? This one, remember, just short of four laps of the uh, circuit here. And 
Ertuganara, relatively small field. Will they go out hard and take an opportunity? Because these conditions are just about perfect. And they are racing in the third race of the day here in Herzogenaura. The unofficial world best, 14-13 by Beatriz Chebet and Nan Gagnas Nigetic. Nigetic running 14-13 in Valencia, but that was in a mixed race. The uh, world record we're looking for today, 14-29. And they have rocked it away. And that is uh, Fochin Tesfai in the lead the 26 year old who won in boston just a couple of weeks ago on the 13th of april in 1445 and was second in the 10k last year we know she's strong she ran 30 26 last year for that second place here in the 10k so she's trying to make sure that this is an honest hard 5k from the gun and she is really pushing hard you can see her almost at top notch sprint off the line there just to get her positioning last year we had a little bit more of bunching in this 5k early on right now we're almost single file medina isa in the second there she's only 19 years old she came here last year and really made a splash on this course running so very well she won here last year in 2023 so Fortune then flat out from the gun. A really aggressive start here from the 26-year-old uh, Fortune Tesfai. The others struggling to hang on to this pace. She was originally, by the way, in the 10K here today. And just yesterday, she changed to this 5K. And it looks like these athletes are struggling to go with her. Medina Asa in second place. Meltnat Wudu in third. Asa, remember, just 19 years old, was the winner of this race last year. She also, uh, just six weeks ago, won the All-Africa Games, 5,000 metres on the track, so she's already well into her racing year. And the Milknut Wudu back in third place in this little line of athletes. She's just 19 years old. She was second here in the 5K last year. had a great indoor season too has uh, the athlete in third Melknut Wudu she was uh, second at the Milrose Games over 3,000 meters and then second over two miles as well to run very fast times indoors but this shot gives you a good idea of just how spread out they are Carrie they uh, it's always tough isn't it I mean less than three minutes on the clock and it's like they've been punched in the face by this really fast first kilometer. Well, Fatin, I think, believes she needs to take them out. I mean, she is, she was going to run the 10K. She dropped down in the 5K. But she knows the speed that Asa and Wudu have. And they are young and they are aggressive. One thing that we saw this year, the woman in second, that's Medina Asa. She went to the States and she ran an indoor uh, 3,000 meter race, two mile race, excuse me, at the Milrose Games. And she, she got disqualified from it. I mean, these are young athletes. You know, you have to learn this sport. It's not like one that you just overnight you get. But they are so good. They're so talented, the girls in second and third right now, that they, are, they cause fear for everyone around them. So that first kilometer, 2.47. Super fast. It's under 14-minute tempo. It's it, crazily fast is what I want to say here over the first kilometer but maybe she's just trying to clear out the uh, world record is 14 13 that is unofficial and that was in a mixed race so 14 29 is what i understand is the world record is being chased here today officially for a women's only 5k and she's trying to shake off these athletes behind her fortune test fire a little glance over her shoulder there to see what damage she's done these are the athletes struggling to go with that leading trio. And those athletes back in four, fifth, sixth, they are fabulous athletes, amongst the best in the world. And that underlines how aggressive these early few minutes, these uh, first few minutes are from Fochin Tesfai. Tesfai is asking for a little bit of help. You could see her drop her arm down and sort of wave the ladies behind her to see if they can come out and help her. Right, right now, she's moving too fast. 
Well, we know she's in fabulous shape. Back on the 25th of February, she ran 29.54 in a mixed 10K in Castellón in Spain. That is her personal best, 29.54. So she's a member of that small club of athletes who have gone under 30 minutes for 10K is test fine. She's making sure that this is a test of strength. She doesn't want this to come down to a sprint finish. She's had two great 10Ks, in fact, already this year on the road. She was ninth in Valencia, where she ran 13, 30, 20 back in January. So her consistency is being underlined here with this early tempo. And uh, the first five, first uh, kilometre, 247, that is world record pace. What will the second kilometre bring up? She's trying desperately here to shock her opponents into submitting here and dropping back. But how long can she keep this pressure up? Tim, I think you nailed it right there saying shock. She's shocking her competitors around her. She's trying to take it out. She is the veteran of the, the trio up top here. So she knows how to go into that pain cave. She knows how to hand, handle the pain maybe a little bit more. But the, the ladies in second and third look very relaxed. And actually, Faten is the one that has a little bit of grimace on her face. So the second kilometre at 2.56, so get to 2K in 5.43. So it was significantly slower, that's to be expected. They've gone 2.47, 2.56. The projected winning time now is 14.17. The uh, ratified world best world record is 14.29, but the, there is a pending world record of 14.13. It wasn't in a mixed race. 14.13, therefore, is the target here today. Now, Fortune set off here so fast, there is a danger of her having done the same, or made the same mistake as Agnes Ngetic in the 10K, maybe having gone off just a little too fast. But she is trying desperately to break the two athletes behind her. Medina Asa and Melk Natwudu. Bouncing along here, looking really strong. She's a lovely looking runner, Kerry. Aesthetically, she moves really well, doesn't she? All three of these ladies look like they are so smooth. You know, looking at Medina Asa, Medina Asa, excuse me, in second, she's got a 5K track PR, 14-16 at the age of 19 years old. I mean, she is truly a phenomenon and a superstar. And that's who Fatan knows she's got behind her. Yeah, and the tall figure in the uh, middle there, looking so smooth. Asa, the tallest of the three, and at 19 years of age, what a future she has got. She was second in the World Cross Country last year in Bathurst, Australia. Already has won the All-Africa Games this year, over 5,000 meters. Was fourth in Riga in the World Championships of the Road 5K last October in 1441, but they're on schedule for something much quicker than that at the moment, as they're uh, approaching 3K. They'll be hoping to go a long way under nine minutes here for 3K. Well, Melkinet Voodoo in third, she ran 8.32 when she went through her 3K for that two mile at Milrose, and she is a very fit too. She's in third right now. She and Asa, the woman in second, they've been racing a lot together. They went over to America, ran a couple indoor races. Then they ran the all African races together. They've been going back and forth a little bit in those results, but they know each other. They know how to work. And you know these two right now, being behind Fatan, they are using each other to be able to hopefully overtake if that's what their goal is. There's the story of the race, 2.47, 2.56, three minutes. They went off again, as in the 10K with yep. Nagetic, very, very aggressively. Maybe a slight misjudgment there as these times are slowing. The projected winning time now, 14.31. The uh, official world record at the moment is 14.29, but there is a pending 
world record coming, which needs to be ratified, of 14.13 by both Beatrice Chabet from uh, Barcelona last December and Agnes Negetic, who we've just seen running from Valencia in the middle of January, just gone. Well, do you remember last year when we watched this race where we saw Medina Asa just be right in the position she is right now, where she was, I believe, behind Sinberry Teferi. She was sitting behind and just kind of stalking and waiting. And there was moments where we thought, well, she did, she had a great race. You know, she looked a little bit of like she had a little grimace on her face as well. But Medina Asa did this last year, and she was the one to break the tape first. Yeah, Asa. Dina Asa, they're in second place. She is the defending champion. She was uh, disqualified at the Milrose Games, Asa, as you said, Carrie, where Laura Muir of Great Britain and Scotland was declared the winner over two miles. But these three locked together, and Fortune, well, it hasn't worked. I think her tactic was to try and get isolation, to try and break the field and get away but they went with her. I don't know though, Tim, I just watched Medina Asa really grimace and put her hand on her hip, almost like she's got a side stitch. Maybe this is exactly what Fatian wanted to kind of just get the grind going and see who could hang on. And you can see right now that Medina is fighting through something. Well, the target time was 14.30. They went through 3K in 8.43, which is just one minute off the required schedule. So it's been almost Brilliant pacemaking by uh, the leader, except the problem being it's been very, very uneven spritz. Fortune pushing on hard, but the times are slowing 247 and then 256 and then three minutes, and those are big slowing, de those are big decelerations. Malkadat Wudu moving into the lead there. She did not like getting a little bit boxed in on the turn there. She wanted to clear herself, and this is the first time we see her in the lead. And they're on the final circuit now, and it is indeed Malkadat Wudu, the 19-year-old who hits the front, and then Fortune battles back to the front as if to say, I will not relinquish the front. This is my race. This is a clash of giants here. 303 that fourth kilometer. Another slowing. back with us for the final minute or two of this exhaust, ex 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 brilliant, exhilarating 5K, an absorbing race here. Melknat, Wudu, hits the front. Fortune has been trying to hold on to the front. The early leader through 3K. They reached 4K in 11.46. That was at 3.03. So each of the kilometer splits carriers got progressively slower. 2.47, 2.56, three minutes, and then 3.03. Well, they are uh, three abreast right now, and each one is taking their turn to see who has this final kick, and you can see it. They are all going hard. They're all going. Medina Asa has been fighting through something this entire race, and she looks great right now. There has been no quarter given here as they turn into the last couple of uh, hundred meters now. 5K is the distance. What's the time going to be? It's Fortune who leads at the moment. It's so, so tight. Here comes Asa now. 
Medina Acer hits the front. Those long, long legs just unleashed and grabs a six or seven meter lead. And Medina Acer it is who's coming towards the line. It is going to be Acer who wins there. 1437 unofficially. Brilliant running from her. She retains her title from last year. And the speed was there. The speed from Medina Acer was undeniable in the finishing stage stages. Maybe that's what Fochin Tesfai was trying to uh, avoid, being out kicked in that way. But there was nothing she could do. There was a one, two, three for Ethiopia. Absolutely brilliant and devastating finishing from the 14, from the 19 uh, year old. And 14.37, that is a new personal best for Acer. Well, it puts her in the top 10 all time for this distance. And indeed, uh, that final kilometer. Well, I got it at what? 2.49, something like that. Absolutely superb. Asa winning it from Wudu, from Fortune. Fochan, who led so much of the race, having to settle for third place, does get herself a spot on the rostrum. 14.38 is the official winning time, by the way, to 14.40 by Wudu and 14.41 for Fochan. It was really tight. Well, I love to see aggressive front running. As uh, an ex-distance runner and Carrie Tollison too, as uh, an Olympian over 1500 meters, we both love to see really aggressive, honest racing. Not uh, in a 10K, for example, 5K of jogging and then uh, winding up in the latter stages. And that most of these athletes want to use the strength and stamina they built up in training to its best, uh, best ability so that they actually run the optimal time for the full distance. They don't want to sit around for the first half of the race or more and then start running hard. And I really admire Fochin Test 5 for her attitude in that uh, first three kilometers of that one. It was so aggressive, but actually, once again, a story of two halves. The first half too fast, the second half a lot slower. But Carrie, I believe, is with the winner. I am with our winner, along with Haile Gebro Selassie, who will act as our interpreter. Medina, congratulations. That was a hard-fought win. Oh, but I'm it was very hard competition. I tried to be in the front and to help and not the others, but uh, the, the weather is uh, really very, a little bit hot. It is hot. You know, we watch Medina pull on her side. Was she dealing with some side cramps during the race? Uh, oh. In the middle of the race, you know, I had you know, this uh, stitching, <laughs> and uh, it was really because of the, the, the weather is a little bit tough you know, for me today, and uh, that's why, you know, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't push. She has now come here and done so well at Road to Records last year and this year. What is it about the event that she loves so much? I'm so happy a member of Adidas, a family of Adidas. I'm so glad you know, to come back here. I win last year and win this year. I'm so happy. Congratulations, Medina Esa, our winner of the Women's 5K. And thank you, Haile Gebrselassie. It's Haile Gebrselassie who uh, understood the importance of
Learning English alongside his Amaric many, many years ago. Great job there, Dali. Thank you. There's the confirmation of the results. Medina Asa winning in 14.38, retaining her title from 12 months ago. Not bad with a stitch as well. Melknad Wudu, a fighting second place there. And Fochin Test 5, well, all credit to her for taking it out from the gun, making it such a tough test for the rest. And then Diana Chet Correa in fourth place, just outside 15 minutes. One more move for the planet. Oh my gosh! Let's go. One more. Oh! All right then. One more. This is not what I ordered. You're late. I, mean, no, I, mean, I said I'm sorry. Are you bringing in Jeep? <laughs> you don't visit anymore. Your card has been cancelled. All right, everybody, I'm down here with Alexander. You know, you have been out here starting races, having a blast. But tell me, what event or what distance would you like to race today? What I would like? Would you run the 10K, the 5K? What they ask me to do. <laughs> Define the question because the answer is going to be different. Well, what would you They prefer? ask me to do the 5K. Oh. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, after seeing all these amazing athletes and uh, it's... I'm already tired <laughs> to see how fast they run. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I'll try my best to yeah. do that, yeah. This is a pretty fun day, but you ran a lot in your career as a football guy. Yeah. I mean, this is something that you do. So talk about your training a little bit. Did you do a lot of running? Yeah, but not, not in this way. Our runs are completely different, you know. It's, uh, most of the time is uh, high, high speed runs, so constantly, you know, sprint and then yeah. stop and then change directions so uh, it's it's not specific like you know the, this one but uh, it's it's a lot of run as well and you've been a long time adidas ambassador what does it mean to you to represent this brand what is my longer relationship so uh, <laughs> I, when i was 16 it was my first contest sign with with adidas so it's a uh, it's being a blast i'm happy to be here again in the headquarters and i'm happy to work with adidas again and uh, it's 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 just a great time you know i spent you know all my career so i have all my memories yes. on my boots <laughs> so <laughs> it's a uh, it's a good wardrobe that yeah, I have yeah. home. It is a good wardrobe. Yeah. I love it. Uh, European champs are here this year for football. Yeah. How's Italy going to do? Well, we don't know. <laughs> if I know it, <laughs> we don't know. But we are happy to defend the title wins uh, one, uh, you know, four years ago. It's going to be a huge uh, European championship because, you know, all the team, I think, they grow, you know, and uh, have a amazing team including Germany, England, France, Spain and Italy as well of course yeah. we are always there and uh, we're gonna defend our title uh, fighting hard and let's see the, what's gonna happen. Well Alessandro De Piero, thank you so much for coming out and it was an honor to meet you. Thank you very much see you guys. Well, Alessandro Piero, there, obviously a very strong uh, advocate for his Italian teammates. The 5K for men coming up. That starts in about 15 minutes time. And of course, uh, big names in that one. Yomif Kajelcha, Berhanu Beilu, Cornelius Kemboy. That will be super fast as well. The men's 5K in just a few minutes time.
ser parte de Move for the Planet genera un impacto muy sorprendente e increíble dentro de mí. El poder haber generado con nuestra actividad corriendo algo positivo y poder ayudar a más personas es algo espectacular. Common goal and for Adidas, the community is the, the central part of it. Really bringing the collaboration together. Love football and what they do in terms of how they engage the community is vital in order for us to really create that change that we all want. Ahora estamos en Jalostoc, que es un pueblo que está en Ecatepec. Que uno de los principales problemas de esta comunidad de Jalostoc es el agua. Entonces, la escasez del agua predomina en todo el ambiente de esta comunidad. Eh, preservar el agua en México es uno de los factores este, esenciales, ya que nosotros carecemos más bien de agua dentro de nuestras instancias, ya sea este, escuela, comunidad. Este es un espacio que nuestros ancestros, nuestra comunidad, donó, compró y además limpió para que pudiese ser un espacio deportivo. ¿Qué estamos haciendo ahora? Esta plataforma tiene una inclinación que hicimos precisamente para captar toda el agua que pueda caer, venir de la lluvia y que lo podamos utilizar para regarlo, para que crezca el, el pasto. Es importante educarnos en sostenibilidad porque existen problemas a nivel mundial de medio ambiente y de mejorar la calidad de vida de los habitantes. What we look for within Move for the Planet are projects that have innovative solutions that are tackling environmental and social challenges of the communities. Esta comunidad tiene mucha violencia contra las mujeres y queremos transmitir un mensaje directo y fuerte de que las mujeres tendrán un espacio seguro para ejercer deporte y otras actividades. Este espacio será llamado la cancha violeta. Las mujeres en el área deportiva nos enfrentamos a una desigualdad porque necesitamos más espacios en donde podamos practicar deporte y estar seguras. Los beneficios que veo en los deportes es tener una comunidad unida, una comunidad con valores, una comunidad el cual puedan este, trabajar en equipo. Move for the Planet is around collective action, really bringing everybody together for people and planet. El estar aquí y poder darme cuenta del impacto real que tuvo Move for the Planet en la gente es una cosa increíble porque la positividad genera positividad y ahora lo podemos ver. Poco a poco eh, se va a poder hacer un cambio. No es de la noche a la mañana, pero sí poco a poco poder hacerlo para poder tener un mejor planeta y mejor situaciones. Voy a, yo voy a continuar haciendo Move for the Planet siempre. Siempre, siempre. Well, there's the scene here on this glorious spring Saturday morning on the Adidas campus in Herzegenaura in southern Germany. We're in Bavaria. And dear running fans around the world. Welcome to uh, please day of racing the Adizero Road to Records, the fourth edition of the uh, festival of elite races. Started in 2021, that was in the September, and then uh, it's been an April date since in 22, 23, and today. And here are the first three athletes in the women's uh, five kilometers, which finished just a few minutes ago. It's 40 and it's five in 14 minutes and 41 seconds. By who led most of the race, battled so hard for the victory. And finishing in second lines. place is Merna Budu in personal best of 14.40. Budu setting first the best by 14 seconds. And now, please, second ladies and gentlemen, a big applause for a new today. world record under 20 years in 1438, the winner in the women 5K race, Medina Aysa. Well, Medina Aysa 
setting a world under 20 record. It has been confirmed 14.38 for the win here today. And, she and the medals so in the and trophies I got the impression are being there was more in the tank there from Medina Mason. Absolutely brilliant from the youngster. She has got such a huge future. Hacker, the mayor of Herzegonaurak, presenting the medals to the first three in that women's 5K. Told that that is a world under 20 record for 5k by Medina Acer. That lovely smile there. Despite a stitch mid race, she uh, was able to hang on to the desperately aggressive pace laid down by Butch and Test 5 and then out kick her at the end. And in fact, Test 5 finishing up in third place behind Acer herself and a Wudu Meltnut Wudu. The uh, world junior record already hers on the track that's 1416 she did that in uh, London in July last year at the Diamond League meeting where she finished four so she now has the world under 20 record on the track and on the road so the presentation is done then the next race on the track the Men's 5K is about nine minutes away. With Haile Gebro Selassie, everybody around here knows you, Haile. I feel so lucky I get to talk to you so much. But what is your favorite part of this day, coming back now for the fourth edition of Road to Records? Of course, my favorite part, uh, you know, I've been running uh, many races around the world, especially the 10K. It's my favorite part. Yeah. When, when I see, you know, to compete here, and um, this is this is amazing, you know, wonderful in the atmosphere inside the Adidas venue. It's great. Well, we saw you after the men's 10K take off and go out on the course and start yelling at everybody, cheering them on. What is your role sort of now? I mean, you're out here talking to all the younger athletes, giving them great advice. So what do you feel like your role is now? Well, uh, honestly speaking, you know, the reason why I go out and to support, you know, the athlete, you know, the athlete, you know, they have to know what is the, the, the target here. It's not about to be number one or number two. Uh, the, the principle of the race is just a road to record. And uh, I think uh, the, the, the athlete who is going to run, you know, the 5K men and the mine, think about run fast. Mm -hmm not to win because they know all all those athletes you know just from adidas you know for adidas uh, no uh, no problem who's going to win you know it can't be any just anybody and my role you know to be here and um, to support you know to encourage and push them yeah yeah and they love it you know you didn't get to run in the fast shoes the super shoes did you well uh, now i'm jealous i know uh, me too it should it should be 10, 10, 12 years ago, <laughs> and uh, I didn't get that shoes, you know, the but, time. But rumor has it, two days ago, you were running with the community, and you were running 545 pace, I late. <laughs> no, no, not that much. Uh, right now, of course, uh, what you expect, you know, I'm 50 plus age, and, uh, well, it's, a, it's a, I mean, technology. I mean, thank you to Adidas, you know, what they're giving, you know, for the, our athletes, you know, our athletes, you know, they're improving, you know, their time. In terms of uh, all event, um, road, uh, track, uh, especially what you see right now. Currently, they they win in London, both men and women, and uh, Boston and uh, men and wow, well, that's amazing! You know, really, uh, this is you know what a wonderful uh, things to do from Adidas. Yes, for sure. Today isn't just about the elite races, though. We have the community race coming up after the men's mile. So what advice do you give all these athletes that are out here getting ready to run their own 5K? 
What I advise them, you know, break your own record. Uh, you have your own record. You know, many of them, you know, I believe, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna run their PB. Uh, today, as you see, under 20, Medina Isa, you know, she break uh, the world record. We have one, one record, national record, and uh, many of them, they run their PB. Uh, both men and women, you know, they run their PB. Yeah. Uh, that is so fun. Well, good luck to everybody continuing to race. Thank you so much for always being such a true Adidas family member and coming out every year. Haile Geber Selassie, everybody. Thank you. Interesting, isn't it? Haile Geber Selassie. I had breakfast with him back in November in Addis Ababa, and he said, because of the shoes, Tim, now it's a different sport. It's still a wonderful sport. There is nothing wrong with the shoe technology improving. And... Uh, the scientists back in the labs doing a wonderful job. Nobody minds that, but uh, I think a lot of people feel aggrieved when times produced in this new generation of shoes are compared with times of the old days. And Haile is saying he would love to have been around with the shoes at his pomp in his best so that he could show what he could have done in these new shoes. His uh, world records, 27 of them, he reminded us earlier, well, each and every one of them very, very special, but they were in uh, footwear that doesn't compare with the footwear available these days. So the 5K coming up, the men's 5K, that's due off in uh, about five minutes' time. There's the circuit. It's a very straightforward circuit, the uh, 5K. And uh, their loop, well, the start begins actually down here near the uh, finish line. They then do uh, three full laps of 1,308 metres. And... Uh, most of a fourth lap, as the women did just now. And the field, well, it's big. 30 starters going in this men's 5K. There were only 13 in the women's 5K half an hour or so ago, but 30 starters of a super strong field. We've got Yomif Kajelcha there, one of the fastest ever at 5K on the road. He's the world record holder, of course, for the indoor mile as Kajelcha, twice a world indoor champion at 3,000 metres. He is a supreme athlete, good from 1,500 up to 10,000 meters. And the athletes ready on the line then. They're about four minutes away from their start. Glorious conditions here. Maybe a little bit too warm for the 10Ks earlier and the half marathons that have been held over the last couple of years. Well, they have uh, gone, been replaced by middle distance races. But these are great conditions for 5K racing. Kajelcha here is up against Behanu Bailu, who's a 13.06 performer. Cornelius Kemboy, who has run 13.24, but is actually worth a lot quicker than that over 5K. Look for Adesu Yehune as well, who's run 13.12. That was uh, when he was sixth here a couple of years ago. But we know Kajelcha is in great shape. The starter here, by the way, is Bjorn Gulden, the CEO of Adidas, to the left there in the white T-shirt, just alongside the athletes. He's a Norwegian, is, is Bjorn, lovely fella, very relaxed and easy to chat to. He's just the kind of the boss of Adidas. So these athletes looking keen and ready to get going. Kajelcha, well, he is special. There he is to the right, about third from the right, the tall figure at the front. He's got Yomif on his uh, number. He ran 26.37 in Laredo earlier on this year for Road 10K. That was a national record. That was on the 16th of March, in fact, only six weeks ago. So I would say he is ready for a world record. It's a case of whether or not this course is going to be kind enough. Cornelius Kemboy. He won two well, 13 his 10 his best. Broke the 27 minute mark in the 10 meter on the road. He's the holder of several Asian records. Every year, present here in Hexagon Aura, and every year he's in shape. He represents the kingdom of Bahrain. I want some noise for Bilano Bale. Yeah. <laughs> Bilano Bale. Well, he is a special athlete as well, Bailu. Sixth in the Tokyo Olympic 5,000 metres. He was third in Jamin just last Saturday, six days ago, just outside 13 minutes for 5,000 metres. And uh, he was a winner in Lille with 13.07 on the roads, uh, on the track, back on the 17th of March. So these athletes just about ready to go for this 5K. 
almost four laps of this circuit here in Herzogenaurach. As I said, big field, 30 starters. Jorn Gulden about to set them on their way in the cloudless blue skies. The target here is 12.50. The world record is 12.49. Make of that what you will. The uh, course record, 12.55 from Nicholas Kipkoria last year. Away they go then. A frantic dash of acceleration there into the first few metres in this 5K. Slight, very slight uphill in the early stages here. The athletes will uh, head up about 400 metres, then take a, a right-hand turn. But it is quick, there's no doubt about that. Pacemakers here, well, they're hoping to go out at uh, 2.34 per kilometre. That is uh, 12.50 tempo, it'll bring them through 2K in 5.08 and then uh, 3K in 7.42. If they get anywhere near that, it'll be super fast, but can see Kajelcha there, right in the middle in the second row back. He's got this lovely sort of rolling style, the shoulders rock from side to side. He's just about the tallest in the race. Lovely fella, I had a chat with him last year when I was in Florence for the Diamond League meeting in Italy. Very relaxed and easy to chat to. He uh, lived in the USA for a long time as part of the uh, group that was being coached with sponsorship from his shoe company back then. Now Kijelcha looking very strong and relaxed in second place there. And the pacemakers well, they are going to have to push it along strongly here. They really do need to run aggressively. 2.34 is only a click or two of four-minute mile pace. Now, I'm not sure they're going quick enough here. We shall see when the first kilometre split comes up. They need to get it right here. Although we have seen in a couple of races already today, the uh, early pace just a little too aggressive. In that women's 10K and in that women's 5K, maybe quicker times could have been achieved with more balanced effort but 234 for the first 5k so almost 61 seconds per lap the world record we're looking for today in this event 1249 12 minutes 49 seconds by Ethiopia's Berahu Aragawi that was in uh, Barcelona back in 2021. The course record here set last year is 12.55. We're talking about tiny margins of difference. So the first kilometre should have come and gone. We were looking for 2.34. Will it have been quick enough? That's a big pack. It was 2.36, 1K, 2.36 at 1K. Needs to be some aggressive, hard running through this second kilometre. Let's get on schedule, because that's a big pack. And it's very hard for these athletes. So often it's tempting to be sitting in the pack and just race rather than perhaps going for the time, pushing on strongly and trying to pull away from people. We saw really aggressive, brave running in the women's 10K earlier from Agnes Ngetic. And uh, in that women's 5K just a few minutes ago from Fortin Tesfai. Well, neither of them ended up winning but at least it made those very aggressive races exciting through the early stages. And now in this 5K, this second and third kilometers, this middle section of the race needs to be super fast. Carrie Tollefson with me here in the booth, Carrie. And I'm in a glorious little uh, 
intense here near the finish yeah. line. Is it pretty hot outside? It is getting very hot. The sun is what's hot. You know, the temperature isn't so high, but the sun is beating down. It's beautiful out there, but you're right. The athletes are starting to feel it in this. Let's face it, the 10Ks are long, but so is the 5K. So we've seen it time and time again, this this event today, that the athletes are starting to struggle a little bit. And when they're talking to me, Tim, there's sweat dripping off of them. So you know they're definitely, their bodies are feeling it. Well, the pacemakers, three or four of them out in front at the moment, bring them through towards two kilometers. We really need this to be down towards 5.10 at 2K for any chance of a super quick time. One athlete drops aside there. Kajelcha is the man that many will be keying themselves off, and at the moment, he's not choosing to go with this or pushing it at the front. He's sitting there in fourth place, just behind the pacemakers. But his record of consistency over the years has been quite astonishing. Fourth in the World Championships in 2015 and 2017 at 5,000 on the track. Third in the World Championships last summer at 5,000 metres in Budapest, where it was sweltering hot. Another pacemaker pulls aside, and Kudelcha now at the front, looking very, very relaxed, isn't he? Looks to leave me like he's more concerned with the win here today. They've gone through 2K in 5.15. That uh, second kilometre was at 2.39. I didn't think it looked particularly aggressive, and it wasn't. They've gone 2.36 and 2.39. At this rate, they won't be much inside about 7.55 at 3,000 metres. But Kajelcha here, I think, perhaps choosing the conservative route. Kerry? Well, the one that I've been watching a little bit is Rahanu Balu. He's in the middle of the pack there. He's coming from Yemen, which is a huge race uh, that they just ran last week. He ran 13 minutes there, so he is in very good shape, but he hasn't quite attacked. I thought he would be the guy to give Kajelta a little bit of, of you know, race in him, and it looks just like Yomef Kajelka is looking so good. Well, six and a half minutes on the clock. The uh, climax of the race yet to come. Kajelta just lurking around in second place looks ready to explode to me we'll be right back Adesu Yehune, just 21 years old, the Ethiopian. He was sixth here last year in 13.12. In fact, it was, uh, yes, it was two years ago. He ran 13.12 here. That is his personal best. But he's in really good shape, Adesu. He came fifth in Jamen in the first Diamond League meeting last Saturday in 13.01 in a track 5,000. He's strong as well. He was third in Laredo in the middle of March in 27.28 for 10K on the road. So he's got that wonderful combination of speed and strength. And he's got to try and test Kajelcha here in this mid-race section because he won't outkick Kajelcha. You have to remember that Yomif Kajelcha is a supreme middle distance racer. He's the world record holder for the mile indoors. 3.47 he has run for a one mile on an indoor circuit. He's the second fastest in history at 5,000 on the roads. But because this hasn't been quick through this first 3K, it just opens the window a little bit, a window of opportunity for the others to run uh, strongly here and finish well. 7.49 at 3K, that third kilometer was quicker. 2.34 for that third kilometer. So they're getting back down towards something close to world record schedule. But when you talk about Kajelcha letting other people into this race if they're not going hard from the gun, this is a man that's run so much faster on the track than most of these athletes. He looks really calm, really reserved. And, you know, for him to be able to just run a, a pace that he knows so well, that sets him up as well. But it absolutely does. Maybe the uh, course record is in under threat hit. Nicholas Kipkoria, remember, 12.55, two years ago. Kajelcha. Well, last year he had a fabulous season, running 7.23 at the Prefontaine meeting. He won in Oslo in 12.41, 1 
not far off the world record. He was fifth at the World Championships. Then he won in Zurich in 12.46. He is one of the most consistent racers on the roads and the track in the history of track and field athletics is Yomif Kijelcha, and he's still only 27. And I love that he's so good on the track, but he's also run 57.41 for the half marathon so fast. So he has such strength, such speed. You know, it's just such a great combination. That's the national record for Ethiopia yeah. at the half marathon. So he holds the world record for the mile and the Ethiopian national record for the half marathon. That is some range. One lap to go then. And these athletes pushing on towards 4K. That's a 3,000 metre time, 3K time, 7.49 is strong. But the second kilometre really slowed dramatically. 2.39 was that one. And now Kijelcha, for the first time, hits the front. And Adusu Yehune, the challenge for him, the 21-year-old, to see how long he can hang on to that, those long legs, that raking stride of Kijelcha. Back in third place, I think that was Rafael Dapash of Kenya, who I believe is making his debut here, the 20-year-old. He's having a fabulous run. Look at the power that Yol Yolmif is trying to put into the ground here. He is really trying to use this little incline to get some distance and to put this race away. Well, he's doing that well there onto the section of short section of specially constructed road for these uh, road to record races. Off it now from Kajelcha with 800 meters to go. And that uh, fourth kilometer at 2.36. He's kept up the pressure nicely. The projected winning time, 13.02. But he will fly, I'm sure, through this final kilometer, Kajelcha. He's run conservatively by his standards so far. Well, this man loves to spend time with his family. He says he loves watching music, listening to slow music. He also loves weekends at home with his family, but he loves to run fast, and we are seeing it today. So look how quickly that gap has opened up between Kijelcha and Adesu Yehune, who we know is in fabulous shape, 13.01 last Saturday, and yet Kijelcha here is tearing away from him through these final couple of minutes. The projected winning time at 4K was 13.02. Can he get under 13 minutes here? Maybe even threaten the course record of 12.55 from two years back. The world record, well, that's going to be out of reach, surely, by Adegari, 12.49 from three years ago. I love that turn that he just made with 400 meters ago. He chopped his steps. He tried to get that speed going, and you can see now in this final push of this men's 5K. Tough this for Kajelcha. Inside the last minute now. Pushing on hardly. Hard. Oh, Adesu Yehune in the background. Chasing for all he's worth. But Kajelcha now negotiates these final two turns. Watch the clock. It is going to be quick. Kajelcha pushing hard. Can he get under 13 minutes here? In her to Kanaurak, 2024. Striding into the first last. 150 meters or so. He'll negotiate this final turn. He's got 10 seconds to go. It's going to be mighty tight for 13 minutes, sub 13 minutes. Kajelcha coming towards the tape. Is he going to get there? Yes, he is. 12.59 unofficially for Yomif Kajelcha. Well, he worked hard for that uh, final couple of minutes, Kajelcha to keep it on schedule. There's a very slight downhill to that last two or three hundred meters, which certainly helps. But the story of the race really is about that second kilometer where the 2.39 clocking was just a little too slow to uh, project them down towards the course record of 12.55. It was nonetheless a dominant performance as expected from Yomif Kajelcha. Kajelcha feeling the heat. And ever since I was up in Addis Ababa myself up in uh, November, I've kept an eye on the temperatures in 
up in that part of the Rift Valley. And they are very, very lucky. Do you know, nearly every day the temperatures are between 20 and 25. It's a lovely, gentle, kind climate they have in the Ethiopian capital. And we we're getting rain and snow and frost and more rain and more rain and more rain in Europe, northern Europe. I think one of the wettest winters on record. Back in Ethiopia, you check, you check the temperatures and it's 21, 22, 23. They are very lucky, they have lovely weather to train in. But this is warm here today, there's no doubt about that. And uh, Yomif Kajelcha, I think, was feeling the heat a little bit there. Give Spencer Nell a little handshake there, the uh, man in charge of athletics marketing for uh, Adid Adidas. And there is the uh, official result that has uh, come up for us. As you can see, Yomif Kajelcha, 13 minutes exactly. I think that's harsh. I could have sworn he was under 13 minutes there. Anyway, Yehoon, Adesu Yehoon, 13.05. Berhanu Beidou, 13.12. So, Rafael Dapash, 13.13. That for the uh, Kenyan 20-year-old is a massive personal best. And Thierry Dikumwinayo, 13.17. The, uh, Bomba Burundian running for Spain now. That is, uh, for him, a huge personal best for a road 5K. It was 13.45 when he was 11th here last year. But Yomi Kajelcha producing the goods yet again. And I mentioned earlier how these athletes are not machines. They are human beings. So all the more credit to athletes who get their preparation right psychologically and physically, and again and again get the result right. Consistency is worth its weight in gold, almost literally. Well, the numbers of people around the start-finish area are growing all the time. All right, Yomif, that final last kilometer, you really pushed hard. Tell us how you won this race. Uh, it's good, but first two kilometers, uh, my body is not like size. Um, it's hard. So after three kilometers, my body is come to relax and relax. So I try to ha fast last kilometer. Did you have fun? Yeah. <laughs> well, we had fun watching you. Everybody give it up to our men's 5K champion, Mr. Kajalta. Ser parte de Move for the Planet genera un impacto muy sorprendente e increíble dentro de mí. El poder haber generado con nuestra actividad corriendo algo positivo y poder ayudar a más personas es algo espectacular. morning at 11.30, the men's 5K, the fourth race of seven here in Herzkenaura got underway. The pacemakers, well, they were due to go out at 2.34 per kilometer, but they never really hit their straps in that regard, and that laid down the tempo of the race. When the early splits are too slow, it's hard to win back that time. They went through 1K 
this field in uh, 2.36, 2K and 5.15, 3K and 7.49. Now, the uh, third kilometre was the only split where they hit the time required. But Yomif Kajelcha dominated in the latter stages, coming home to a pretty comfortable win in 13 minutes. Exactly the uh, Adesu of Ethiopia, his compatriot, taking second place in 13.05 with Beilu on 13.12 in third. It was a 1-2-3 for Ethiopia in the men's 5K, as was the case in the women's 5K. And I shall pass you back to Kerry Tollefson. Kerry. All right, everyone, I'm down here with CEO of Adidas, Bjorn Gulden. Bjorn, we're having a blast out here. Couldn't be better than this, right? No, you know, eight over eight million people are running now in the entire world. And you guys are a big part of that. What does that mean to you? Well, I think sport is the best thing in life, and we're a big part of it, and Adidas will be an even bigger part of it, so it's good. How much fun is it for you to see this campus just buzzing today with all of these great athletes from around the world, and then the community coming out to support it as well? Well, I think uh, it's the only company in the world where you have the best athletes in the world running in headquarters, and you have your own employees also taking place, so there's no better place to be. You know, you have had such success at the World Marathon Majors, on the track, in cross country, all over the place. What's the secret? Well, it's the people that work in this company that makes the product, um, the people who sign the athletes. And of course, it's the history of a brand that for 75 years has been the best sports brand in the world. I agree, because you guys had me as an athlete as well. You are going to go and run the 5K now. Are you warmed up? Are you ready to go? I don't need to warm up. It's like 5K, first part of it is to warm up, and the other part is to survive. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for all that you do. Congratulations on another great event. Take care. Enjoy. Well, Bjorn Gulden there. Warm up and then survive. That's kind of route one. Next up is the uh, first of the mile races, the women's mile. That's at 10 minutes past the hour. About 20 minutes from now, almost 20 minutes away, the women for their race will do one lap of 1,308 meters plus a further 301 meters. So another quarter lap in effect. And the lineup, well, it is a relatively small field, as you can see, just nine athletes there. The uh, world record outdoors for the mile on the track is 4.07, of course, by Faith Kipiegon last summer. That was in Monaco. But the world record for the mile is 420.98. That was in Riga at those inaugural World Road Running Championships in Riga, Latvia, where the mile was won by Deribe Welteji in 420.98. She won by over two seconds from Frawaini Hailu. And the best athlete this morning is uh, Alem Zanet Kazanet of Ethiopia. He's run 424 for the mile. That a track mile, mind you. Now, there has been talk in recent uh, months about how much the footwear technology has improved running ability and running times. And indeed, there are people now who are pretty much convinced that the uh, times coming out on the roads in some events are quicker than track times. The uh, distance that's been discussed about in real focus is the 10K. At the mile, I don't think that's the case. I think on the mile, the track will always be quicker with pacemakers and pace lights and the spikes, which of course you cannot use in the roads, but it is nonetheless a gap that has narrowed, I suppose you could say. Here are the trophies for that uh, men's 5K. And yet another trophy for the uh, dominant winner today, Yomif Kijelcha. Harry mentioned uh, the number of runners on the planet these days. Uh, I heard last year, I think it was, that there are now, including people who just jog once a week and maybe just try and keep fit for another sport, there are over a billion runners on the planet. One billion runners on the planet. That's what, one out of every seven people, something like that, has got a pair of running shoes and gets out and jogs to some degree. And that's good to know. It is such a wonderfully therapeutic uh, activity for your mind probably more than your body jogging is a great way of just easing your problems out of uh, pole position for a short while getting in some fresh air mingling with nature 
and sometimes it just helps you work out problems in your life as well. It's a spectacular activity for giving you that sort of grounded feeling, I suppose you could say. Well, there is the uh, finish line right in the center of picture in front of the uh, main Adidas headquarters building. Many people are very excited about what's going to come in these next three races. We've had the two 10Ks for men and women. We've had the 5Ks for the both. Now the women's mile is next in 15 minutes' time. Then the men's 800. Very rarely run the men's 800 metres on the roads. And then the men's mile. And just so I can uh, whet your appetite, they remind you that that men's 800 has an astonishing lineup as we see Yomif Kajulcha waiting to receive his award for winning that men's 5k. The men's 800 meters, listen to this, has the world outdoor champion against the world indoor champion. The world outdoor champion, Marco Arop of uh, Canada, up against the world indoor champion from Glasgow just a couple of months back, Bryce Hopple from the USA. And throw into that mix the world championship bronze medalist from last summer in Budapest, Ben Pattinson, Pattinson of uh, Great Britain. He is a especially young athlete too. I had a chat with him a couple of days ago. So waiting patiently then the uh, first three from this uh, men's 5K for their presentations. Yuhune, Adesu Yuhune, sitting there patiently. And he and uh, Kajelcha both chatting with Bjorn Gould in there. These athletes proving how good the footwear is. Their legs do the talking for them. They do the talking for the brand. presentation about to get underway for the men's 5k. Dear Adidas family and dear running fans around the world, please welcome our fastest man in the five kilometer race at the award ceremony. Finishing today in third place is Birhanu Balev from Bahrain in 13 minutes and 12 seconds. Birhanu Balev making Finishing sure in the one, second two, three, place three, three, is Adi Su Yihuna in the, last Yihuna Olympic games. We'll be looking in for the personal best time, 13 minutes and 5 seconds. And the champion, the winner of the five kilometer race in the men's category is Yomif Kehecha in 13 minutes 00, zero from Ethiopia. And the medals and trophies are being handed over by the CEO of Adidas. Bjorn Golden. Well, the constant toing and froing for domination between Ethiopia and Kenya continues in this men's 5K. It was uh, happy hunting for the Ethiopians. One, two, three for them. Kajelcha. Yehune and Bailu make it one, two, three. The temperature continues to climb here, but thankfully the longer races are done. The women's mile coming up in about 11 minutes time at 10 past the hour. And then the men's 800 at 12.35. It's almost midday here 
in uh, Bavaria, in southern Germany, and then the men's mile at one o'clock in one hour's time. Many of these athletes are faces and names you will see come the Olympic Games in Paris this coming summer. But of course, they've all got to negotiate their uh, domestic trials first and make the Olympic team. And for hardly any teams, is competition for places tougher in the middle long distances than for the Ethiopians and the Kenyans. Got our selfies there with the uh, world indoor record holder for the mile and the winner today over 5k here in Herzog and Aurak. There you can see top of picture, that's where they enter the last 100, 150 meters or so before that sprint and then the sharp left turn onto the orange road surface towards the finish line, that last 40 meters or so. As circuits go, it's quick, not the absolute best, but it's pretty quick. As we know from the times that we've uh, seen churned out here over the last couple of years. Ser parte de Move for the Planet genera un impacto muy sorprendente e increíble dentro de mí. El poder haber generado con nuestra actividad corriendo algo positivo y poder ayudar a más personas es algo espectacular. For Common Goal and for Adidas, the community is the, the central part of it. Really bringing the collaboration together love football and what they do in terms of how they engage the community is vital in order for us to really create that change that we all want. Ahora estamos en Jalostoc, que es un pueblo que está en Ecatepec, que uno de los principales problemas de esta comunidad de Jalostoc es el agua. Entonces, la escasez del agua predomina en todo el ambiente de esta comunidad. Eh, preservar el agua en México es uno de los factores este, esenciales, ya que nosotros carecemos más bien de agua dentro de nuestras instancias, ya sea este, escuela, comunidad. Este es un espacio que nuestros ancestros, nuestra comunidad donó, compró y además limpió para que pudiese ser un espacio deportivo. ¿Qué estamos haciendo ahora? Esta plataforma tiene una inclinación que hicimos precisamente para captar toda el agua que pueda caer, venir de la lluvia y que lo podamos utilizar para regarlo, para que crezca el, el pasto. Es importante educarnos en sostenibilidad porque existen problemas a nivel mundial de medio ambiente y de mejorar la calidad de vida de los habitantes. What we look for within Move for the Planet are projects that have innovative solutions that are tackling environmental and social challenges of the communities. Esta comunidad tiene mucha violencia contra las mujeres y queremos transmitir un mensaje directo y fuerte de que las mujeres tendrán un espacio seguro para ejercer deporte y otras actividades. Este espacio será llamado la cancha violeta. Las mujeres en el área deportiva nos enfrentamos a una desigualdad porque necesitamos más espacios en donde podamos practicar deporte y estar seguras. Los beneficios que veo en los deportes es tener una comunidad unida, una comunidad con valores, una comunidad el cual puedan este, trabajar en equipo. Move for the Planet is around collective action, really bringing everybody together for people and planet.
El estar aquí y poder eh, darme cuenta del impacto real que tuvo Move for the Planet en la gente es una cosa increíble porque la positividad genera positividad y ahora lo podemos ver. Poco a poco eh, se va a poder hacer un cambio, no es de la noche a la mañana, pero sí poco a poco poder hacerlo para poder tener un mejor planeta y mejor situaciones. Voy a, yo voy a continuar haciendo Move for the Planet siempre, siempre, siempre. Well, as you can see, the spring sunshine continues to bake southern Germany, Bavaria. We're in adjacent to the town of Herzogenaurak at the Adidas headquarters. The uh, campus, as we call it, is the setting today for the fourth edition of the Adizero Road to Records, a day of elite road racing, followed by a mass race. There's about 1,500 athletes going in the uh, 5K later on. But that's the uh, circuit for the mile races coming up. The women's mile gets underway in about four minutes' time. That'll be followed by the men's 800. Rarely run on the roads, but it will be a fabulous field. That's going to be a great race, that men's 800. Stay with us for that. And then the men's mile is at 1 o'clock Central European time. That's obviously uh, 12 noon in the UK. There's the lineup for this women's mile. It is a small field, just nine athletes out there. The world record on the track was set last summer in Monaco at 407.64 by Faith and Kip Yegon. But forget that, that is out of sight for road races. The uh, world record for the mile on the road was set in Riga last October, 420.98 for the women's mile. That was by Deribe Volteji when she took the inaugural world title for the road mile. It is a world record distance now. World Athletics, the global governing body, deciding last year that from Riga onwards, the mile would become a world record distance on the roads. And there is a possibility today of that in both these mile races, particularly in the men's race later on. That's, uh, as I said, in about 55 minutes' time. But everybody having a good time here on the Adidas campus. There's, there's uh, plenty of food and drink around to be enjoyed. The hotel has been a fascinating place to hang out for the last couple of days with dozens of household names and famous faces uh, moving around. Agents, coaches and top athletes as well. Speaking of which, here are the top athletes for the Women's Mile. Addison Wiley right in the middle there. The 20-year-old uh, American, the best at 4.30. There's a good chance for improving significantly on that today. The talent was seen by former world champion 800 meter Janet Tepkoska while she was at primary school. Lean and tall, running the 400 and 800 meter. She changed to the 1500 meter and at the age of 20 already holds personal best of 356.72. She was fifth at the World Championships in Budapest. From Kenya, let's hear it for Nelly Chepchichi. From Huntington, Indiana, we have another youngster storming into the world rankings. She combines the 800 with the 1500 meet on the track and does well at both. She holds both a national high school and a collegiate record. We have seen a fast 800 meter in 157.64 and a sub four minute 1500 meter in Brussels last year. She's fast already, but the best is yet to come. From the USA, a warm welcome for Eddie Wiley. 
and a little bit younger on the far right and fast already. She has the fastest mile time of the whole field here with 4.24.29 from Ethiopia. Get your hands together for Snet Alem. Well, some of the athletes introduced then for this mile race about to get underway by uh, Michelle Boateng. Starter, there. Michelle Robinson, executive board member, Global Human Dutch Resources, People who and Culture. Are, is a regular commentator on TV as well. So the uh, athletes just about ready. Nine athletes out there. Addie Wiley, the youngster, massive talent for the USA. Already, as Michelle said, under four minutes for 1500 meters and that is the benchmark of supreme world class at women's 1500 meter running on the track for the mile well anything under about 425 is great racing Michelle Robertson, executive board member of global human resources for people and culture at Adidas gets the race underway so, Wiley, tall figure to the right of picture there. Moving along with uh, the wonderfully named Kenyan, now glorious Chep Chumba, who is second to right. Addison Wiley just sitting in the centre of the group with the dark glasses. And Nelly, Chep Chia Chip. Another 20-year-old who was fourth in Riga back in uh, October at those World Road Running Championships in the miles. She ran 4.31 there. Was actually fifth in the World Championships in Budapest, too, at 1,500 metres. Nelly Chip, 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 Chip. Watch her. Probably the tallest in this lead pack. Alexandra Bell, too, of Great Britain is in there, the 31-year-old. Best of 4.39, but a 1.57, 800-meter runner. And Bell was uh, a finalist in the 800 meters at the Tokyo Olympic Games, finishing in seventh place there, the Britain, and uh, sixth at the Commonwealth Games back in 2022. But now glorious Chep Chumba leading at the moment with that long raking stride, beginning to open up now. So, the first 400 metres, 66.9. And that uh, 400 metre section from the start for the mile races, pretty flat. As now with two minutes on the clock, they're on the slight uphill side of the circuit to the west of the course, but still very tightly bunched this pack. You could almost throw a blanket over this group. Addison Wiley left a picture with the dark glasses and ponytail, just beginning to try and push this pace along, hugging the inside line. Could be very, very tight, this one. Over two and a half minutes on the clock now, and that means uh, they're past halfway. But non glorious, Chep Chumba, 31 years old. Recently ran just outside two minutes for 800 metres. And Nelly Chep Chia Chip, who just last week ran 158 for 800. She's in fabulous form already early in this Olympic summer that is uh, coming at us very, very fast. Before you know it, we'll be through those European Championships in Rome and onto the uh, Paris Games. but. Chep Chirche now beginning to create a gap here, running very strongly. If you're in 158 shape, you've got that speed in your legs. They've gone through 1,000 meters in 252. And Nelly Chep Chirche beginning to forge a gap. Addison Wiley and Alex Bell chasing hard, the American and the Briton, respectively. Zanet Alem. The 19-year-old back in fourth place, who is uh, quickest on paper over the mile distance, chasing the three ahead of her hard. But Nelly Chepchirchir looking in control, 
looking wonderfully strong out in front. That lovely long stride as she takes the final corner. 200 meters to go. Now, Alex Bell, as the 800 meter specialist, will have the speed here as they take the penultimate turn. But Nelly Kepchirchirchir for Kenya, just 20 years old. Remember, already in fabulous shape with 157 for 800 this year. Turns into the finishing straight. Good running from Addy Wiley to grab second place at the moment as they come towards the tape. It's Wiley and Bell battling for the line and the tape there broken with a time of 4.30 by Nelly Chepchirchir. Unofficially, the winning time, 4.30. The uh, World Road Mile record stays safe. And remember, it's 4.20 from Riga last September, last October, rather. Well, that was made to look relatively straightforward for uh, Nelly Chep Chia Chip, the men's 800 and the men's mile to come. But the winning time for Chep Chia Chip is a new personal best. It uh, improves on her 4.31 from Riga, just waiting for the time to be confirmed. Well, those times, ignore those times. Those are the times, I think, from the uh, 5K earlier on. We'll uh, rejig things slightly. And Carrie Tollefson is down at the finish. All right, Nelly, we are here. You ran so well. You pushed that last 800 meters to crack the tape. Tell us about your race a little bit. Uh, I ran 1,500 meters, and I had a personal pace of 356.72. And in 800, I had a personal pace of 158.23, yeah. So today you came here and ran a new personal best in the mile too. You are on fire. So um, um, <coughs> I'm very happy to be in this race because this is my first race to be here. And uh, I ran last year one mile in Riga and I had a 432, yeah. So and, um, I thank God for all that they have given on to me. Well, congratulations. Everybody put your hands together for Nelly Chip Kachir. Good job. There's a young lady with times on her mind who is clearly very ambitious. She knows she's got most of her career ahead of her. Nelly Chip Kachir, just 20 years old. But the early pace was solid, if not lightning quick, 66.9 through 400. Didn't get an 800 meter split, but they got to 1,000 in 252 and then 1,200 in 324, which means they were running 68 seconds per lap had it been on a 400 meter track. It wasn't quick, therefore, but uh, Nelly Chepchirche took control over the final four or 500 meters and eased away. And that strength and speed, that speed endurance she's used to good form, taking her well clear. She did run 356 for 1500 in Brussels when she finished in third place in September last year at the Diamond League meeting there, and uh, she did look like the class act there over the road mile, to be perfectly honest. That was a comfortable win for Nelly Tepchirchir. I'm down here with three-time Olympian, Mihail Buchleitner. 
You are out here having a blast, but you have some really cool things coming up. So let's hear what you've had coming up. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm the organizer of the Wings for Love World Run in Vienna, the biggest flagship run globally. Um, and we are expecting 13,500 people to run on the 5th of May uh, next week. And, and we are... I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to have Adidas on board on the Wings for Life World Run. So it's a special event, it's the most emotional event I think. Uh, and 100% of all the entry fees and all the donations go directly into the foundation to heal spiral cord injury. And well, I'm very honored to, to be the organizer of this race. And people out here today can still register. Yes, most of the flagship runs are sold out, but there is an app. Just go into the App Store, download the app, donate the starting fee, and then start the race. Yeah, this is a, a huge deal for you. I mean, being a runner is obviously who you are. Uh, but talk about how you got into this. Well, I was, uh, I'm organizing this race for the 11th time now, so I was there in, in this event from the beginning. And I saw it growing, and, and it's, it's, it's so emotional. Most people start their, their race career because it's not a matter how fast you are, or so it's just to be part of the thing, to be part of, of the scientific approach uh, and the research and everything. And it's, it's, it's such a big thing, and everyone uh, can be in a situation that, that uh, some kind of accident can happen. And, and uh, well, be part of there and uh, run together with us next Sunday. Yeah, exactly. You ran the mile all the way up to the marathon. So what is your favorite event been today? Uh, well, I'm expecting the mile. I'm, I used to be a long distance runner because I was participating in the marathon two times in the Olympics, but I like to run a 1500 and a mile because it's, it's, it's from the first meter there is action and I'm looking forward to the mile race of the men now. Ooh. You said you wanted to see if they could run faster than you did. I'm sure they will. So I was <laughs> running 354, so I'm sure they will be much faster. Oh, well, thank you so much for what you're doing. And we'll get maybe some more people registered for your event. Yes, I hope so. Please download the app and be a part of it. Thank you. Well, I'm a huge fan of the Wings for Life World Run. I worked on it for several years from the uh, headquarters of the event in uh, Salzburg. And absolutely, as Buchleitner was saying there, 100% of entries, entry money goes to the Foundation for Spinal Cord Research. And just a quick story for you. It has a, raises a particular accord with me because my best friend from university had a massive motorbike accident back in 2003, he became a, a tetraplegic, was in a wheelchair and lasted 11 years, bless him, and he's long gone. But his life was uh, hell for those 11 years when he was in a wheelchair, going from a big strapping guy of about 1 meter 90, quite sporty, to being in a wheelchair with uh, no feeling below his, uh, his armpits. And uh, yeah, it always raises up, puts a lump in my throat. And I think of Wings for Life and what they're trying to achieve. And that essentially is uh, pouring money into research to enable mankind to find out how to make nerves join up, join together again. Spinal cords, when severed, of course, have a devastating effect. But one day, they will uh, find out how to do it, and the more money that goes into it, the better. And the app is great, by the way. And what's unique about that Wings for Life uh, World Run event is that the finish line is a moving finish line on a vehicle that comes up behind you. So the gun goes, everybody sets off on a planned course, a planned route that is free of traffic, and then at a certain period afterwards, a vehicle leaves the start line and chases you, in effect, at a nice slow pace to begin with. And it's got the timing mat um, attached to the vehicle, in effect. So as it's coming up behind you, so the finish line is coming up to catch you. And that car, that vehicle, accelerates every uh, few minutes so that gradually it hoovers up everybody, so to speak. But the winner is the person who gets furthest up the road and furthest away from the start line and is the last to be caught by the vehicle. And uh, in the years I was working on the event, some of the distances achieved were quite astonishing.
So you saw there what I was talking about, the uh, vehicle chases up the road behind the runners in the Wings for Life World Run. It's a moving finishing line that uh, the timing mat attached to that vehicle and it gradually catches the runners, accelerates every few minutes and eventually catches all the runners. And the last runner to be caught is the winner. Truly fabulous event, a brilliant concept for a Wings for Life World Run. If you can, download the app and have a run on May the 5th. So, next event on the track, we've uh, had the women's mile, it will be the men's 800 metres. It starts in about 10 minutes time. And for me, it's a lovely uh, sort of bridge between these road races and the summer season of track racing, which is already underway. A Diamond League in Zhamen, China last weekend, another Diamond League in China today. And then uh, the Diamond League starts moving on to uh, venues further west. The Rabat Diamond League is coming up, the Doha Diamond League. So Morocco and Qatar getting involved and then it's into Europe. And then the Prefontaine meeting over in uh, North America, the only Diamond League in North America. And many, many meetings coming up through the middle of the summer and late summer in Europe, of course. Other side of the Olympic Games. But the 800 meters, well, I don't think I've ever commentated on an 800 on the road. In fact, this will probably be one of the shortest road races I'll ever have commentated on. It promises to be a real humdinger. The world outdoor champion, Marco Arop, from Canada, from Budapest last summer, against the world indoor champion from Glasgow. He's an American, Bryce Hopple. That was just a few weeks ago in the Scottish uh, capital. And then Ben Patterson from uh, the UK, the bronze medalist at the World Championships last year in Budapest. That is a heck of a clash. And there's uh, other athletes there as well who will be battling for the win. How they will negotiate these last few tight turns, I do not know. But it will be quick because of where they start on this circuit in Herzegonau, right? Most of their 800 meter strip is on a slight downslope. So we will see super fast times as they go through uh, 400 meters. This is one of those spring days that you, you just want to uh, go on forever and ever. It's a glorious spring day, more like a summer's day in uh, Bavaria. And uh, the crowds will get bigger and bigger as that mass race, which I think is at two o'clock. It's after these elite races are done. It's five kilometers. Many of the Adidas staff, and as we heard, beyond Gulden, will be running that 5K. But uh, two races to come before that, the men's 800 at 12.35 and the men's mile at one. And uh, down to you, Kerry. I know Bjorn's gonna run, but so is Alberto. Alberto, you're yeah, gonna run course. the 5K. Yeah, of course, I'm gonna have fun with the team, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm down here with Alberto. I have to say your name, Mon. Uncini, Magnelli, did I get it right? It's great. Oh, good, you know, because I'm Norwegian, I'm not Italian. No, it was well. <laughs> but we are having such a blast here. This year, we have some different events. We have the 800s and the miles. Do you love that? Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, we can also group different athletes with different events. And so it, uh, you know, it, it increases the excitement and it helps us to have races that are faster. 
I see you out here just having so much fun. Your son is with you, your family's out here. Every year you bring them out. Yeah, they are always here. Of course, we are together in this moment, but especially with our team, with our business partners, with our retail partners, with the media, with everyone that contribute. And it's a sense of partnership and family that comes to life. I love it. I saw you just a couple weeks ago in Boston. Yeah. And someone has something special for you. So we're going to bring in Jack Fleming. That He's the president of the Boston Athletic Association. Jack, what do you have here? Thanks, Carrie. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations on an awesome day, Alberto. Uh, Boston's still on a high from Adidas uh, coming in and lifting our city again. And, you know, Adidas is our longest sponsor, 36 years. It's unbelievable. Sasai Lemma uh, won an awesome race. I'd like for Adidas to have the brake tape that uh, Sasai uh, broke and maybe can go into the archive or wherever you think is, is best. Wow, fantastic. Well, thank you, Jack. I mean, this Jack means a lot for us, not just for me, but of course for the entire organization. It's 36 years of partnership. It represents the partnership with athletes, the partnership with, uh, with you, and uh, the team effort to make this happen, and to build it together with the effort for the communities as well. So it means really a lot. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank Good luck you. for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. <laughs> What a cool opportunity for you to get that to put into the archives. There's so many neat things in the archives here in Adidas. Yes, there is a rich history of 75 years, inspired by the vision of a man that have the passion and the dream and the belief to make athletes better. And uh, we like to keep in the archive those special moments because it represents an history that no one has ever seen, that uh, we, of course, have uh, for 75 years. And is where modern sport has been created, so, and bringing to life the vision of the founder. History in the making again this year, so congratulations on another great event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the 128th Boston Marathon was uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And yes, Adidas have been a sponsor of that race for many, many years. And great to see Jack Fleming uh, handing over a little memento there too. Alberto Uncini Manganelli, the uh, general manager of running and credibility sports at Adidas. Well, our summer seems to be getting hotter and hotter in Northern Europe, and Germany doesn't escape the blaze. It's a superb day here in Herzogenaurach. Temperature locally here at the moment is uh, well, climbing all the time, officially 18 degrees, feels more like about 24, I have to say. The sun is uh, unrelenting. In the summer, the days will only get longer and hotter for many, many weeks yet. And speaking of hot, well, perhaps the hottest race of the day is coming at us, the men's 800 metres. It's due off at 12.35. I make that in about three minutes' time. And if you've just joined us in the last uh, few minutes, well, welcome on board. You're seeing our uh, unbroken coverage of the fourth edition of the Adizero Road to Records Elite Running Festival. The men's 800 metres, well, they don't even complete one lap. Easy life for those fellas. There it is, that from the start down to the finish is a giant U in effect, a giant U shape. But uh, it is through 200 and then 400 metres when they take the first bend gradually downhill and there is the lineup Marco Rock the world outdoor champion from Canada Bryce Hopple the world indoor champion Ben Patson the world championship bronze medalist goes in this one Josh Hoey he's a 145 performer from the USA Christian Harrison he's a 146 man from the USA and Callum Dodds is in there as well and a US based uh, Britain who has run 146 as well He's to be coached by Linford Christie, and and Callum Dodds, though he has moved on from that arrangement. For the award ceremony of the Women's Smile Race. Before and that 800 gets underway, the, the presentation is for the close, Women's Smile. And it was indeed a, uh, a close race. Finishing in third place. Alexandra Brell from Great Britain in personal best for 
finishing in second place, Edison Willi in 431.9 USA. And the glorious champion, the winner of the mile race in the women's category comes from Kenya, Nelly Chepchichir in 430.9 personal best. Well, Nelly Chepchichir's official the medals time, 433. and trophies are being handed over by Michelle Robertson, executive board member, global human resources, people, and culture, Adidas. So Nelly Tepchir, the champion then of the Women's Mile, the inaugural Women's Mile at this Adi Zero Road to Records Racing Festival. Second was Adi Wiley of the USA. And third, Alex Bell of Great Britain, a rare outing for her over the mile. Tepchir's winning time, 4.30. And uh, Addie Wiley just a second back, and Alex Bell a further second back ahead of uh, well, a trio of Ethiopians, Howie, Sanet, and Ardanu. Some uh, useful names been beaten there by the American Wiley Addison, Addie Wiley, and uh, Alex Bell. Confirmation of the uh, nine athletes who came home in that marathon. Nelly Chipchich is winning time 4.31 and then one second gaps back to Wiley and Bell with uh, Howie Abira. And that mass finish, five of them very close together. First five in that uh, women's mile race. The men's mile will close the portfolio of races here today. That's at one o'clock, so in 25 minutes time, less than 25 minutes time, but coming up any second now is the men's 800 meters, which for many will be the race of the day. So strong is the field, and they will come tearing around those last couple of corners. Do stand back from the barriers because there's a chance you'll get blown aside by the wind as they go past. These men, these 800 meter runners, are supreme performers. We have the world champion in Marco Arop of Canada gold in Budapest last summer. We have the world indoor champion from Glasgow just a few weeks ago, Bryce Hoppel of the USA, and the bronze medalist from the World Outdoor Championships last summer in Budapest, Ben Patterson from Great Britain. That trio is quite some coming together of talent, and there are others in there too. Most of the course for these uh, athletes is downhill. Just eight of them out there. Marco Arop to the right of picture of Canada. Loved uh, basketball originally. In June last year, he suddenly and then uh, to the scene with some wins in his basketball races, coach, some Mike Bocicchi, from high school, became his athletics season. coach. He impressed again in the heats in the semi-final of the World Championships, announcing something big could happen in the final. He didn't disappoint and, made it, and won the bronze in the 800 meter and made it an all Adidas podium. From the UK, we have, make some noise, Ben Patterson. Ben Patterson, the World Championship bronze medalist, based in Loughborough, up in the Midlands of the UK. From Midland in Brilliant Texas, athlete, the confident Texas, too. Had a good chat with him a couple of days ago. NCAA title, born in 1997, he slowly became a global force in the 800 meter. Celebrated his biggest success under the roof of the short track, where he made the podium twice. Take your hands together for the World Indoor Champion of 2024 from the USA, Bryce Hoppel. He's a great racer too, as Bryce Hoppill says. He keeps in touch with the wonderful Jim Ryan, who sends him good luck messages before races, and he uses those 
as motivation. As failures, it's a prolific racer too. Run 14 800s the last outdoor season. Bryce Hopper, watch him. And here is Marco Arop. Please give a warm welcome for the current 800 meter world champion from Canada, Marco Arop. Well, Marco Arop loves to front run the 26 year old Canadian. He's a Sudanese Canadian, very proud of his roots. He's strong and he's fast and he's big and he's powerful and he'll be very tough to beat today. He's a 357 miler as well as Marco Arop. He, uh, there is no world record, of course, for 800 on the roads. Let me remind you that the world record outdoors on the track is 140.91 by Rudisha back in 2012 in uh, the London Olympic Games. Soham Olmay, executive board member and chief financial officer of Adidas, gets the race underway. This men's 800 meters will be quick. A rock to the right of picture. Big fella, very powerful, loves to take it out from the front and looks to be adopting that same tactic here. Had a superb year last season, concluding his season with a second place in the Diamond League final where he ran 142 for 800. He's a massive fellow, he's about six foot four, one meter 94. Marco Arop, 82 kilograms. And uh, nearly 50 seconds on the clock. And Arop continues to dominate here, pouring on the pace. Bryce Hopple in second place. They knew this would happen. This is predictable. This is what they had to do, was get into the slipstream, hang on to the coattails of Marco Arop. He doesn't take any prisoners. Marco Arop then takes the final turn. Watch the clock, this will be super fast. Bryce Hopple trying to come back at him. But it's Marco Arop who leads by six or eight meters now into the final turn. And watch the clock, this is gonna be super fast from Arop. This will be a world best for 800 meters. Crosses the line there in 144 unofficially. The rest of them I think taken by shock of the aggression from Arop there through the first two or three hundred meters. They never got a sniff at the front. He goes to the front, says, catch me if you can, and they couldn't. Well, there you have the time, bottom of the screen. 1.45 for Marco Arop. And he made that look very, very comfortable indeed. He's a man at the height of his powers. He's still only 26. He's got years to come as Marco Arop. Took the bronze medal in Eugene 2022, gold in Budapest 23. Having served his apprenticeship a few years ago, he was seventh in Doha back in 2019. So he, he learned his trade and has gradually risen to the top of the pile. And he was certainly the top of the pile here today. Marco Arop, that was a, a fabulous run. And he never really gave the others a chance to get back on terms, did he? Bryce Hopple finished in second, 146. Ben Patterson third in 147 with the uh, Sambuca of Ethiopia fourth in 148. Please pick up your bit on time in the arena parking garage. Thank you. So just the one race to come, that is the men's mile. That's due off in about 15 minutes time, just over 15 minutes time. There is confirmation of the 800 meter win for Marco Arop. One minute 45 from Bryce Hopple, 146. And a further second back in third place, Ben Patterson in third, 147. The big three then, one, two, three. Arop and Hopple, world outdoor and indoor champions respectively. Patterson, the world championship bronze medal. And then uh, Samuel Bouquet and uh, Callum Dodds in fourth and fifth. And over to you, Carrie. Marco, I heard you walk over here and you said, whew, that was fun. 
It was. Uh, I didn't know what to expect coming into a road 800. It was the first time for that, and uh, it exceeded my expectations. It was lots of fun. You could feel them breathing down your neck, though, in that final 10 meters? Yeah, I figured if I had a lead going into the last 50 to 100 meters, it was going to be hard to pass. That The crowd really helped me get to the finish, though. Well, you have done so well on the world stage. This is a big year. How does this race help you going into Paris 2024? I think just getting wins gives me so much confidence, and hopefully that's the momentum we're going to keep going. What's the goal for the Olympic Games? Uh, would I be? I'd be lying if I said anything but gold. Ooh, I love it. Well, congratulations. Give it up to Marco. I love it. I love it. World champion at 800 meters. What's your goal for the Olympics? Oh, fourth or fifth. Yeah, Marco Rob there. Route one for him. And it's great to see that uh, he takes it on from the front and makes everybody work so hard. One more move for the planet. Oh my gosh! Let's go. One more. All right, then. One more. This is not what I ordered. You're late. I said, I'm sorry. Are you bringing in tape? You don't visit anymore. Your card has been cancelled. All right, everyone, I'm down here with Michelle Robertson. Michelle, you are an executive member of the board here at Adidas. Talk a little bit about what you do with Adidas. So I head up HR, people and culture Adidas. I say I have the best job in the world. I truly believe it. What is so good about your job? <laughs> it's so great because of the people that we have here, that we get to work in these amazing workplaces with our athletes. You can see and feel the culture that we have today with athletes with partners, with yourselves, with families, the community, all coming together, living the spirit of sport. And that's really what you feel and get every day at Adidas. And that, for me, that's just amazing. Well, just the energy that we've had here in yeah. the first six races. We have one more. Yes. What has been your experience here today? It's been, I mean, it's electrifying. You can see and feel the, the energy from everybody and the excitement, everybody willing each other on, and that's just wonderful. I mean, I'm really looking forward to the next event too. And we have great talents from all over the world, all coming together. And of course, the 5K later as well. I look forward to running that. Yeah, well, way to go out here today. It's been a blast. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's a real buzz in the air, isn't there, with the uh, just the men's mile to come. We've already had a world record today, women's under 20, 5K road mile record by Medina Asa. She was already, by the way, the world record holder for the 5,000 on the track for an under 20 athlete. Well, now she has the track and road world records. This was the way the uh, 800 unfolded through 223, 800, and 51.6, and then 600. 117.5. That is quick. And Marco Arop on the roads producing track times over 800 meters and giving nobody else a chance to get close to him. Bryce Hopple back in second place is a fabulously fast finisher. Just couldn't get back to the Canadian. And Ben Patterson likewise looks pretty happy with his third place. All going well. These races, of course, are a sort of stamp of approval on the uh, winter's training for many of these athletes as they look at the summer looming in front of them. Plenty of track races to come before those games in Paris. The likes of Patterson may have the option to go to the Europeans in uh, Rome, which are in June, of course. And then uh, carefully negotiated racing series for each of these athletes could result in medals in Paris. The men's mile coming up. Well, it's uh, one lap of 1,308 meters, one big lap with that 301 meter start to get them onto the lap. 
And there is the lineup, and what a lineup it is. Hobbs Kessler goes in this one. He's the uh, one to watch. He holds the world record from the inaugural World Road Running Champs in uh, Riga, Latvia last October. Look out for Sam Prakel, though. He was third in that uh, Riga Road Mile World Championship. Uh, Wanyonyi of Kenya, Emmanuel Wanyonyi, is only 20, but he's in fabulous form. In fact, he's the world number one at 800 meters at the moment, 143. He ran in Nairobi just last week. So Wanyonyi will be a real handful today for the uh, two Americans, Kessler and Prakel, and everybody else in there. Watch out too for Ryan Mfalele of South Africa. He's a 3.57 performer, so this promises to be a fabulous race. And the world record could go here if they head out fast enough, if they head out quickly and aggressively for the first half. The world record is vulnerable. It stands at 3.56.13. Now, by today's standards, that is relatively slow. It's still great running. Anything under four minutes for the mile on the roads, on the track, is still great running. Ladies but Hans and Kessler gentlemen, is you're running more than capable the world. of breaking that time. Please welcome our fastest man in the 800 meter race at the awards ceremony. Finishing in third place is this good looking guy from Canada. Patterson in 146.7. Finishing in second place from the United States, Mr. Bryce Hoppo in 145.6. And the champion, the winner of the 800 meter race in the men's category, is Marco Arab from Canada in 144.3. Congratulations, man. What a race. And the medals and trophies are being handed over by Ham Ulmeyer executive board member and chief financial officer Adidas. Well, there is uh, Ben Patterson receiving his uh, medal. I can assure you he hasn't changed nationality. No nation hopping for him. He's a proud Brit, is uh, Ben Patterson. Chatting to him uh, a couple of nights ago here and his coach Dave Ragan of uh, Become quite an impressive pairing. He's Commonwealth bronze medalist. He's a former European junior uh, silver medalist. Sixth in the Europeans back in Munich in 2022. And he's got good strength too. He's a 339, 1500-meter runner. So Ben Patterson of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the bronze medalist of the World Championship, takes third place here today. Bryce Hopper to the left of the picture takes second place. And uh, the winner, Marco Romnar. No, we have 144.3 announced. But uh, I think road times were only ever recorded to the uh, nearest four seconds. That's why we announced earlier that the winning time was 145. But it is, in a way, a kind of unofficial world record, a world best at 800 meter win for my Rob, because I'm not sure an 800 meters has been uh, anywhere near as fast as that on the roads in any years gone by, if it's ever been run. I'm not aware of one, I must admit. So, just the men's mile to come, as I say. It's about, what, six or seven minutes away. It starts on the hour, one o'clock local time here in Herzegonaurak. Confirmation of that win for Marco Arop. Yes, 145 is what we're saying unofficially. Uh, officially, rather. Bryce Hopper, 146. Ben Patterson, 147. And then the rest of them, 148, 149. With Kristen Harrison of the USA uh, coming through in 152. Kristen Harrison, by the way, is a 146 performer. So not his best day at the office. But hopefully it was uh, 
a small glitch. As we see the course for this uh, men's mile, the uh, last race of the day, of course, it is exactly the same as the women ran in their mile half an hour or so ago. They start to the east of the course uh, with a sort of run-in for just a, a few dozen metres to get onto the main loop. And then it's one full lap of 1,308 metres uh, and uh, finishing on the 120 metre run-in towards the finish line. And the finish line, they're right in the centre of your picture. Well, I'll tell you what, there have been plenty of days over the last few months when you couldn't have done this through most of Northern Europe. It's been a, a wet, cold, damp, grey winter for most of Northern Europe, but this is special. Truly glorious out there. Many of these athletes, of course, have been at altitude or are going off to altitude. I think Ben Patterson was saying to me uh, two days ago that he's heading off to San Moritz from here on Monday. And uh, San Moritz in Switzerland, up in the Engadine, about 6,000 feet altitude is probably the nicest place to train at altitude in Europe. In my experience, it's a rather magical place, like a sort of lost world of lakes and rivers and forested hillsides in a big valley, the Engadine, up in the, uh, up in the Alps, about three hours drive from Zurich. Trained there two or three times myself for a month at a time, and I'm very, very envious, I have to say, of Ben Patterson heading up there for uh, some good training, a few weeks good training, hopefully, before he latches onto the track season proper. So 11 starters in this men's race, this men's mile. And they're looking to get to 800 in 155, which will set it up nicely for uh, hopefully an improvement on the existing world record. It would be a fabulous way to round off the day with a climactic performance. Hobbs Kessler. Well, he has run 3.48. That was for uh, an indoor mile at the Milrose Games back on the 11th of February. It makes him the fourth fastest miler of all time indoors. So he has wintered wonderfully, his Hobbs Kessler. He's only 21. People call him the one to watch. Many people think he will be the greatest American middle distance runner there's ever been. And that includes the likes of Jim Ryan, of course. He's good at 800, he's run 145.8. He broke four minutes to the mile when he was just 17 years old. And he's got a, a slightly weird, adventurous nature to his personality. He loves rock climbing, he loves difficult stuff, climbs with real high scoring ratings, so to speak, as they are rated in the rock climbing community. So watch Hobbs Kessler, 21, he's world record holder and world champion. And he will be pushing with Sam Prakal and Wanyonyi of Kenya, the world number one at 800 this year, to break that world record in the mile in just a couple of minutes' time. 356.13, those are the magical figures we need to see bettered here today. Don't discount either Eric Avila of the USA. He's a, a 334, 1,500-metre runner. And here is that start line for the elite milers, due off in about two minutes. making a race hard by taking the lead from the start. That's given him wins in Diamond Leagues and last year in Budapest during the World Championships, he won the silver medal. He ran 143.57 last week for the 800 meter in Nairobi. Today he will take on the mile. From Kenya, a round of applause for Emmanuel Wanyonyi. He is from Fasai in Ohio and became five-time All-American during his college career while running for the Oregon Ducks. He won both the 1500 meter and the 3000 meter title during the 2023 USA Indoor Championships. He loves his running so much that he postponed his wedding with a week to be able to run the World Road Championships in Riga. It was worth the wait as he married as a bronze medalist. From the USA, get your hands together for Sam Prego. He 
was a high school sensation in the USA by running a sub four minute mile at the age of 17 with a time of 3.57.77. He skipped the college circuit and turned pro with Adidas because everybody thinks he is the future. But he already represents the present as well. In Riga last year, he became the first world champion in the road mile. From the USA, get it going for Hobbs Kessler. Yeah, Hobbs Kessler has got to be confident of that 348 indoor mile. Can he go anywhere near that here today? So the field then, Kessler, Prakel, Wanyonyi, and Falayle of South Africa, Avila, Ryan, Davis, Kibiot, Koech, Simotwo, McClocky, and Wagena, Chala. He started there. Is Alberto Uncini, Manganelli. So where they go then, there is a pacemaker, and that is uh, Adisu Wagena Chala of Ethiopia. He's looking to take them out to 800 in 155, and he has already hit the front and is pushing on strongly here. They've got to go with this. They've got to accept the pace here from Wagena Chala, unless he goes too quickly. But a little glance over his shoulder here would help tell him that there's a bit of a gap back to that pack. You can see Ryan, Paul Ryan of the USA. Back in that pack now. And Emmanuel Wanyonyi, we know in fabulous shape. 143 in those legs from Nairobi just a week ago. Wanyonyi looking very relaxed there at the front of the pack. So they've gone through 400 in 51.6. That is a little bit too quick. That was uh, actually in that men's 800 meters, just waiting for this road mile split for the men to come up. So the pacemaker, we're going to Charla, just still with that five meter lead, but he's gradually stretching them out here, and that's good to see. Kessler has got some work to do at the moment. These first five are getting away. As they head on the gradual, just a little bit of upslope on this section of the course to the west of the, uh, the loop, the pentagon that forms this 1,308 meter loop. But the pacemaker has gone off very quickly and it's great that several names have gone with him. Of course, when you've got 143 speed in your legs, like Wan Yon Yi, you're feeling pretty relaxed at this tempo. The miler's strength will come through perhaps in the second half, but Emmanuel Wan Yon Yi at the front now and looking very comfortable. He is a very, very fast 800 meter runner, faster than anybody else in this field. And yet he is the one at the front. Charles Simotwo. He's a 3.49 miler, back in third place, back in fourth place. And also looking strong, Collins Kibiwat Koech, who doesn't have a name, mile time to his name, nor on the roads at least anyway. Hobbs Kessler left a picture, just beginning to ease up to the shoulder of Wanyonyi now. He's timed this surge well. Through 1,200 meters. Well, remember the world record is 356.13. Hobbs Kessler, the world record holder, the world champion for the road mile. In second place now as Juan Yoni responded to that surge from the American. Kicks in hard again. And that powerfully built Emmanuel Juan Yoni holds first place as Hobbs Kessler eases onto his shoulder. Hobbs Kessler now hits the front for the first time. 200 meters to run. Hobbs Kessler then, with one Yonni using that 800 meter speed, kicks into the final turn. This is a battle royal. Watch the clock. Watch the clock. 356 is the world record, and one Yonni leads now. Hobbs Kessler in second place, and one Yonni eases away, and he's got this uh, sorted, and he needs to keep going because the world record could go here. It does go. 
354, maybe 355. But that is unofficially a new world record for the Roll Mile. And Wanyonyi celebrating long before the line, punching the air as that final surge destroyed what was a very, very strong field. Well, he's found himself a new event. He's got himself in a bit of trouble here. This is the World Championship silver medalist at 800. He was World Junior Champion back in 2021 in Nairobi. His uh, record is all about the 800 meter event. And yet, here he is, having set a world record in the mile of 3.55. Well, that was quite superb from Emmanuel Wanyonyi. He just allowed Hobbs Kessler a little sliver of hope that he could match the Kenyan. But when you're in that sort of form, 143 form, and you can display strength like that in the final quarter, you're going to be very, very tough to beat. Hobbs Kessler did take second place in 3.57. And uh, in third place, it was Ryan Mfalele of South Africa. Brilliant run from him. To turn back one or two pretty useful names, including Sam Prackle. Well, a winning feeling is a lovely feeling, it's a lovely habit to have. And look at this, Emmanuel Wanyonyi looks to me like he could go round again. He's a big lad too, isn't he? Big, powerful runner for 800 metres. I tell you what, when he comes up against the man who won the 800 metres here today, Marco Arop, the world champion from uh, Budapest in Paris, and hopefully they will. That is going to be one of the great clashes of the games. Arop, the world outdoor champion against uh, Wanyonyi, the silver medalist from those world championships in Budapest last year. What a race that promises to be. It is confirmed then, it is a new world record. The timing equipment here should allow times to be recorded to the uh, tenth of a second or even a hundredth of a second. Confirmation of that win in the men's mile for Emmanuel Wanyonyi. Brilliant running from the Kenyan, better known as an 800 meter runner, turning back the uh, 1500 meter specialist Hobbs Kessler, the world champion on the road mile in second place. Ryan Falele, brilliant from the South African, 357 from him. And uh, Charles Simot, keep it what in fourth and fifth. Sam Brackel, well, back in seventh place today, didn't quite have the legs, but the power of Emmanuel Wanyonye was tangible here today and he won that one celebrating and with consummate ease never gave the others a chance and i think uh, hobbs kessler left himself too much to do through the second half of the race it took a big effort big acceleration from him to get up to the shoulder of uh, Wan Yon Yi, and as he made it up to the shoulder of Wan Yon Yi, he even got slightly in front so uh, Wan Yon Yi kicked again and he was gone well, Carrie Tollefson is with our winner. Well, we are down here with the new world record holder, Emmanuel Wagnoni. Emmanuel, when you broke the tape and saw that time, you made us a little bit nervous. You were celebrating. How did you feel crossing the finish line? First of all, I feel so happy for today. It's not this, but I tried to push myself. Then my, my coach would tell me it is possible to break world record one mile. When Hobbs went around you, and you had to recover and get that last 200 meter sprint going. What did you think? Uh, my, my coach told me, if you hang up to 200 meters to go, you can win this race. 
Yeah. You knew it. Coach, I mean, how proud are you right now? This was a big day. There's a lot of pressure on him, a lot of eyes on him, and he did it. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling. This is an, a unique event, and of course, a world record is so special. This event is called Road to Record, so this is what we need, the last race, a world record, so fantastic. Thanks to Adidas, thanks to everyone who has contributed. Were you a little nervous at the end there? Yeah, I was standing at 200, and I didn't know exactly, because for him is a new event. He's mostly an 800-meter runner, but uh, he's amazing. He's an incredible athlete. I'm so happy for him. This sets him up really well for the summer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is a good build-up for what is coming ahead, Olympics, so yeah. looking forward for it. Emmanuel, you're a world record holder. Thank you. <laughs> Give it up to Emmanuel. Right. And he's only 20 years old. He's discovering a new event. He was a world junior champion back in 2021 in Nairobi in front of the home crowd. In 2022, he was fourth at the World Senior Championships in Eugene, Oregon, just outside the medals. And then last year in Budapest, took a silver medal. Well, I'll tell you what, if that trajectory continues, place your bets now. Where do you think he's going to finish come Paris this summer, this August? Brilliant stuff from Wan Yon Yip. And he is only, I say he's 20. Actually, I think he's 19 years old. This was the way the men's one mile unfolded. Emmanuel Wanyonyi taking control in the latter stages with the first half having been good and solid and fast. Hobbs Kessler, the reigning world champion, world record holder, got onto his shoulder momentarily with about 250 meters to run, but then Wanyonyi kicked away again to a new world record. Here in Herzogenaurak, 3.55 unofficially, the winning time for the 19-year-old Kenyan who has uh, a summer of glory in front of him, surely. A former world junior champion, can he become Olympic champion in Paris in just uh, three months' time? What a day it's been. Well, uh, Carrie Tollefson is with Haile Gebrselassie. Well, I am back down here with Haile. We can't get enough of you, Haile. We want to hear from you all the time. What a way to end this race. Finally, we got it. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Congratulations. It would have been, you know, two seconds more, I mean, faster. <laughs> and uh, he started to celebrate, you know, uh, 30, 20 meters ahead. <laughs> but you, wonderful. Well, you set world records before. What is that like? Wow, it's a lot. Ask, you know, the guy who broke, you know, this mile. He, he will tell you. <laughs> it's, it's, you know. Uh, when you break a world record, uh, you feel it like, oh, um, I am the one, you know, in front of uh, others. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, you have been able to give back to this community time and time again. Now these younger athletes are able to establish themselves as an Adidas athlete like you. What advice do you give these athletes to give to other athletes? What's important now, of course, uh, everybody, you know, preparing for a coming uh, Olympic, that's very important. You know, today, as I said before, the, this is the road to world record. And uh, I, I check, you know, just many of our uh, Adidas athletes are well prepared. But what's important, you know, the next three months, be disciplined, work hard, and uh, come to Paris. It's going to be something something special as an Adidas. Well, two-time Olympic gold medalist you were. That has to be pretty amazing. Multiple-time medalist at the Olympic Games, the world champs, also winning the Berlin Marathon four times. You're quite the stud, Haile, and we really appreciate all the work that you give back to this community. Thank you very much. I appreciate this, you know, to come in Germany, to come especially in Adidas. This is amazing. It's all, you see, everybody, what you see here around, it's a, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a family, you know. It's a really uh, thank you all Adidas people who works, you know. I mean, especially uh, the one, you know, they work, you know, for uh, technology. I mean, they uh, improve to improve, you know, the shoes and uh, other stuff. It's a great job. Let them uh, uh, encourage them. I mean, uh, really, they they can see, you know, their effort. You know, they 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 did a lot. Of course, at the end of the day, the result's what you have seen now. Impossible is nothing, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Haile Gabriel Selassie. You've got to love that, haven't you? Haile Gabriel Selassie. What's it like breaking a world record? He's broken 27. He should be able to come drop an answer. But no, Haile says, 
Ask the young man who's just broken the world record for the mile on the road. He's uh, keeping it to himself. Maybe that's a magical element that is so, so hard to find. Well, another young man has found it today in spectacular fashion as uh, Emmanuel Wanyonyi of Kenya becomes world record holder for the road mile. Unofficially here in Hochigenaura uh, in Bavaria. Of course, it has to be ratified. Everything has to be checked for a world record to become an official world record. Many, many checks have to be uh, gone through, but I'm sure that the uh, organizers here will have got everything right. It has been a, a fabulous day of racing, as we hoped, as we expected, I should say. We uh, had a world under 20 record in the women's 5K by Medina Esa, who was already the world record holder for 5,000 meters on the track as a, an under 20 athlete. We had an unofficial world best for men's 800, with Marco Arrop winning that 800 a few minutes ago in 1 minute 45 seconds. And then, of course, um, Emmanuel Wanyonyi, in what is, as his coach explained just now, a new event for him, setting a mile world record. And that one, there is no doubt about, I'm pretty sure, 99.9% .9 sure, will get ratified OK. And Wanyonyi, an 800 meter specialist in supreme 800 form at the moment, running three 55 and turning back the challenge of some specialist milers like Hobbs Kessler and the South African in Faleli into second and third places respectively. Well, even in that uh, the mile race just now, the first 800 was only 157. It wasn't as quick as had been expected, 157.7. And then 1200, 257. And then obviously a nice little cranking up of the tempo in the latter stages there by uh, Emmanuel Wanyonyi. Well, that concludes the racing at the uh, 2024 Addis Zero Road to Records. Festival of Elite Racing, the presentations yet to come for that men's mile. And uh, fittingly, it has produced perhaps the climactic performance of the day with a, a world record from Emmanuel Wanyonyi. Now the summer months stretch out in front of these athletes. And uh, so much to look forward to. One or two more road races coming in this spring season, the Prague Half Marathon next Sunday. But the... Uh, Diamond League that is uh, was last week in Xiamen, China to get the Diamond League season rolling. It's followed by today's uh, Diamond League in Suzhou, again in China. And then the uh, third meeting will be in Doha on Friday, the 10th of May. So uh, very soon. And then we'll be rumbling along into the summer. Uh, with the Diamond Leagues coming through thick and fast. The Rabat Diamond League is on Sunday the 19th of May, the Eugene Diamond League the following Saturday the 25th of May, and then Oslo and Stockholm on the 30th of May and the 1st of June, respectively, and so on. Alberto Uncini Manganelli making the uh, presentations, I think, for this men's mile world record. He is the general manager of running at Credibility Sports for Adidas. So it's been uh, quite a six days Dear for Adidas, Adidas hasn't it? As a brand, they had the world record from Pedas Jep Chir Chir in London fans, just last Sunday, six days ago, world. women's only world record for the marathon, 216-16, and a world record today in the Our men's mile man from Emmanuel Wanyonyi, again race. of Kenya. Ryan and Falele of South Finishing Africa. Finishing in third place. Was a sixth in the mile is in Riga. Mr. Ryan. 357.35. The, the South African they finished in third. His time, 356.4. That is a new national record. Finishing for M. Falele. That is a fabulous place. return for a smart race today.
Hobbs Kessler looks a little disappointed with his run for second. Beat 56.1, Kessler. Magnoni, though, well, he didn't win by a big margin, but actually it was much easier than it was made to look. Raise all your arms for the winner and new champion and new world record holder, the winner in the men's category of the mile, Emmanuel Van Johnny. Manuel Three, Van Johnny. 54.5. in fact, that time. Record. Brilliant stuff from Van Johnny to conclude today's racing with a new world record. We celebrate Kenya. Congratulations. And the medals and trophies are being handed over by Alberto Uncini Manganelli. He is our general manager running and credibility sports. Well, hello everyone. What an awesome day it has been here at the 2024 Adi Zero Road to Records. 
I'm going to start over here with the Adidas guys, Tim. You've been talking all day, so we're going to give you a little <laughs> bit of a break. But, Spencer, I mean, give us the records. Tell us how many were, were there today. Wow, I'm almost out of breath, Kerry. It's uh, nine national records, one world under 20 record, and one world record. <laughs> I mean, you said you're sweating already. Like, you know, it has been such a fun day, but I know you were really waiting for that WR next to a result. Yeah, I think we were, we were hoping that uh, we get the world record for Agnes. She's been a little injured. She got two seconds off it. But uh, I guess the money was really on the men's mile, and we had first and second actually under the world record, so we we're exceptionally happy. So repeat that again. How many records did you have today? Nine national records, 120 world record, and one world record. Yes, that's why we have this name, the Road to Records. Alberto, you're getting ready to race, so we got to talk to you quick. Favorite part of the day? Well, I would say that the entire day is a celebration of sport, it's a celebration of people, it's a celebration of partnership. You can only dissect one part of the day. I think the moment overall is really a very valuable and there's a lot of meaning for us. And it's just the beginning? It's just the beginning. We'll see you next year at the fifth edition? Uh, I guess so. Oh, yeah. He said it here first. Tim. Okay, you walked us through all of these races. Seven races, new events this year. Can you give us our fa your favorites? You think I've memorized every single performance? No, I mean, you know, I think what is special is that world records should be rare and they should be very special. And this has been an incredible six days. After Perez Jepchirchir's women only world record in London last Sunday, six days ago, 2.16, 16. And then a world record today for Emmanuel Wagnoni to close the day's racing here in Herzog and Aurak over, uh, over a mile. It's been a special, special day of racing at, a, at the end of an incredible week. And we've, obviously we've got the Atlanta City Games in three weeks time, three weeks today coming at us. That's gonna be a great day's racing. But I think the most important thing that we should all appreciate is you know we talk about records and this is called the road to records but great racing is a sustainable quality and that's what I love to see and we've had a real feast of that today yeah we sure did you said it we're gonna be back on the Adidas YouTube channel in three weeks you and I at the Atlanta City Games we're just starting here Paris 24 you better watch out for the three stripes because these athletes are coming for you thanks for joining us today and get after it